it, it, it happened to Markiplier, so it's yeah, just that's like, what I'm referencing. So I'm just like, it was eh, well, I mean, is it really that big of a loss? <laughs> I think it happened that, to like. I okay. mean, the punishment does not fit the crime. No, it though. doesn't. I have. Like, I know. I know. But I just you think. You spam. Emotes I just think that chat. if you watch garbage content like Markiplier, you probably <laughs> like, deserve it. I'm not going to get into his content. I'm not really a fan, but I think people spamming emotes when he tells them to and having their fucking Gmail blocked and disabled is like. That's so wild. Fucking crazy. Hey, like, man, like, YouTube's all about getting rid of accounts right now, man. They look like, they sound like they're trying to shed accounts as quickly as possible. Especially yeah, now. It's like, yo, the day later. these accounts aren't commercially viable. Get fucked. God, that's so weird. <laughs> that's so Imagine dumb. If, they start... if that actually happens, it's like literally the dumbest thing. Yeah, I'm just... I'm thinking of what the long-term ramifications are. That so, say they actually do it and like get rid of ninety percent of content creators who aren't providing value to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then, like in a year or two, there's no new talent. Right. No one rising like, to the yeah. No one. Uh, PewDiePie didn't start making you know fucking billions for them. No, mm-hmm. no. It, it, like, it all started with small creators, and that's sort of yeah. why YouTube it, worked in the first place, is that you roll the dice on that small chance. Now, yeah. I know. This, this, is, this, is, so, this is as short-sighted as the whole no porn on Tumblr thing. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't walk this back in a day or two, it's going to be, be surprised. pretty bad. Yeah, I would be yeah. very surprised if there's not some weird clarification of. Yeah. What do you mean if if somebody's a Nazi? Well, no, of course not. No, no of course yeah. no, no. No, they make lots of money. They make no, lots of money. Of uh, those gays now, you know. Oh God. Not very commercially cool. viable to be gay. Don't want that. No, don't need that. And then Chambers is like, "Yeah, I agree. It should only be about games." Mm. <laughs> Chambers sucks. Which one's that? Oh, he's the I guy know. that banned somebody for being gay. Ah, gotcha. Oh, scene. that one. Yeah, that turd. There's just so many that you have to spend. No, I, I, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'm just like, wait a minute. Uh, it sounds familiar, maybe. Oh, no, there's a lot of shitty people. There's a yeah. lot of shitty people. He is just one, but he tries to justify it and thinks he's a big brain. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just saying that shit, like... You 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 do you 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 can be yourself, but just don't be yourself. Be about <laughs> video games. It's about video games, guys. Oh, that was like the streamer yeah. collective. Yeah, yeah. He had this dumb team, and they're terrible. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh god, and then they like doubled down. He, he recently like like I think he was excluded from the best of NES marathon because literally nobody. I I think people were gonna actually pull out if mm-hmm. they allowed him to run. So they just didn't let him run. <laughs> and I think that he said Excellent. something about, um, I'm going to run my own marathon someday and I won't discriminate <laughs> against people. Like, oh. Uh, well, uh, what, except what, for. Well. It's like, dude, I'll run 24 hours of bad dudes and do better than you. <laughs> I guarantee I could. I get the word out, I could do it. <laughs> 24 oh hours God, of bad so dudes for the, for the Trevor Project. Let's go. <laughs> That's so powerful. Everybody, like, I'll have a bunch of people on it. Everybody will just be doing a bad dudes run. Even Rhett. Rhett's going to do a bad dudes run. Perfect. Rhett's going to enter the speedrunning scene. I Yeah, I could probably get banned saying all this. <laughs> oh, well... I'm not commercially in the meantime, viable anyway. Let's enjoy the ride. Let's enjoy the ride. Yeah. Ain't nobody tunes into this garbage. <laughs> oh, we got our we have our we have our audience. If Poncho Smith, he's here. Yep. <laughs> that was so dismissive. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's Tinker Jim and I. <laughs> almost two years. Almost. Almost. Oh, it's like so close. So I, it's like right there. Mm-hmm. I like it too. Carnov is in the He's gonna, he's gonna not subscribe next week though. I played, I played. I played Karnov. I just didn't do it online. But I did a casual run of Karnov, like uh, on the first. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I did. I did participate in the spirit of Karnovember, even if it wasn't. <laughs> and Rhett, no nut Karnovember. Look at that, twenty-seven months in Damn. the big seat. 
But only a two-month streak. Only Weird. a two-month streak. Yeah, it lost it for some it's reason. No reason. I guess he just hates you. Yeah, he probably does. Let's be honest here. I've only got three days left on my current one. We should have streamed later. You're bouncing and finishing a JRPG. I wonder what JRPG that would be. Mm. Might it be one that I finished last night? He's going back and finishing his Swicoden one. Yeah, he's got to go. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> on that Swicoden train now. Yep. We'll see his own. See, like finishing a JRPG. I just assumed he meant finishing Cold Steel three. I mean. It's Chestorm. He's always finishing a JRPG. He is always <laughs> finishing a JRPG. You are not wrong in that regard. Or he's finishing his RPG so or he can play it. Finally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, John is trying to make Sweet Code in a thing, and I'm over here like, no, we, we're going to make Wild Arms a thing. Wild Arms? <laughs> see, I had more fun with Wild Arms than I did Everybody Sweet Code. fucking hates Sweet Code is something I've realized. I think Sweet Code is just fucking boring. Yeah, that, it's beginner's RPG. That's the thing. Everybody, nobody likes it. Is it like I? I've heard, this like, is like nobody Patrol. likes it, but it'll be on every goddamn PlayStation RPG list. I can't find a single person that loves that game, but if I go look up RPG <laughs> lists for the PlayStation One, it's gonna be Sweet Coden. It's or period top JRPGs ever. Sweet Coden Two. There it is. Yep. Every like oh, wait. vitriol, like active vitriol from folks to the point where I'm just like, whoa. Wait, are you talking yeah. saying people hate two? Yeah, that one too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I thought everyone liked that See, one. See, like most people I know one. like two, but it's one yeah. that I don't understand because one is dry, is oh, bone talking, dry, okay, boring. So you're talking about one mode. Yeah, mainly. I'm talking about one. Yeah, one's. Nice. I think two's we mostly okay. Cool. We'll probably get into that at some point. Yeah, imagine it's on my imagine. brain. I think everybody knows one because that was like the first JRPG on the PS One. Was it, or was, or did Wild Arms beat it out? No, the first RPG on the PlayStation 1 was Beyond the Beyond. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Beyond the I Beyond is by uh, Camelot, the people who went on to do Golden oh. Sun. And Mario Party. Don't and forget. Mario Party. Yeah. And well, Golf like... Story. Well, somehow as a kid, Sweet Coden was the one I played. Mm-hmm. Beyond the I Beyond haven't... is, oh boy, it's it's. Wow, this was really an SNES game until like one month ago, wasn't it? <laughs> That's uh, it's better than Sweet Coden, which feels like an '80s game. Woo! Upgraded, but it's oh, got John, that zoom in on the combat, John. Come on, it's a dynamic mm-hmm. camera. The, the camera's pretty good. <laughs> I like the camera. You like the camera and the vampire? No, the vampire's the so vampire's weird. terrible. <laughs> It's so dumb. <laughs> and it comes back in two. I know, it's so dumb! <laughs> like, of the things to pull back to. Yeah, that's right. The most important character has returned. <laughs> <sighs> it moved, they moved past it quick. Get back to that good, good Luca content. There you go. He's mean. He is. Do you want to slap him around? <laughs> I don't know. I think I think I don't know if he's slappable. I, I think that like Swicoden is the least horny JRPG you could probably come at. Swicoden one is the least horny. Yeah, sure. like it's just like man. There's no human. There's yeah. not there's not enough humanity in it to be horny. Yeah, it, it's like a marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Sogcast episode one hundred and five. Welcome everybody to the Sogs Cast. Sogs Cast is brought to you as always by Moon Pies. Moon Pies. Pokemon fucking sucks. I'm your host, Polly. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Guess what? Got a special announcement? Yeah. Y'all, you like special announcements? Yeah. You like special episodes of the Sogs Cast that you didn't know were coming? Yes. We got one coming up next week. Cause, oh, um, shit. Because next, next Sunday, on the 17th, we are going to be interviewing oh, yeah. Sean Shiplock, who you may know as Reen Schwartzer, Pewter from oh, I, the shit. Somnium Files, that bird in The Legend of Zelda Wind Wa- or um, the <laughs> Breath of the Wild thing, Risotto yeah. or whatever. Fucking nice. I think Zelda sucks too. So, but uh, yeah, Jeez. we'll we'll be we'll be uh, we'll be interviewing Sean Shiplock. Uh, if you got questions. Send them over to me. You know how to get them to me. You can either send them to Polly at SoxMakePeopleSexy.net or at SMPS Updates on Twitter. And, yo, we'll do it. 
I'll, I'll, I'll ask him questions on your behalf. No, I'll even ask oh, him yeah. the naughty questions if you want. He won't care. <laughs> I, hey, it's listen, listen, listen. Cast. I know Sonic Mega, okay? Like, he's written for my site, okay? Oh, shit. Yeah, he wrote a Mega Man X review for us. Oh, right. Oh, my Way God. back, I think it was God, during one of our 31 God. Days 31 updates uh, marathons. So, God, yeah. I know I Sean just... Chiplock. I know. Sh- I knew him when he was a wee bitty... B- I knew him when he was fucking <laughs> nothing. You knew Sean, you knew D-Mac. I knew D-Mac, who's still nothing. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm starting to see why people turn me down for interviews. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kate Higgins. Please give me a chance. <laughs> I've, I've not been directly turned down for interviews. Except Idea Factory. They, they fucked me over once. But That is a story that I probably shouldn't go into on the <laughs> yeah. air. Lest I burn Lest some bridges. Go into for the fourth time, for yeah. the fifth time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to my immediate virtual riot, he's a writer, a poet, a genius. He knows it. It's Rhett. No, that one's me. Hi. You met, you met me stop. How's it going, Rhett? It's my turn now, John. It's Sorry. John. It's John. That, that intro yeah. was just like tailor made for me, though. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, it's fine. Continue, Rhett, I guess. Wow. <laughs> just once Maybe it'll be even better for me. Just should always. I haven't even thought of one for you yet, John. That's why I'm talking to Rhett, so one pops into my head. <laughs> you have a perfect one. Continue. John, I you do know. these off the I do these off the top of my head. <laughs> this is going swimmingly. It is. It's like these episodes are always so smooth. You know, after 104 <laughs> episodes, we've got it down to a science. It's just smooth like butter every time. Yep. Rhett's ready for a podcast. He sounds like it. Boy, am I, yeah. You know, there was a Moon Pie Pokemon, but they got cut. <laughs> Pokemon sucks. Tip does. It does. Pokemon <laughs> oh, sucks. I, I was thinking, like, what's the HMO one? No, wait. To my media I, virtual left, all better. the children flew when they touched his hands. It's John Thayer. Hi. Hey. Hi. I spilled, I spilled <laughs> hot tea on my. I spilled t- hot tea on my naked crotch early today, and it sucked. That's kinky as fuck, man. It wasn't kinky, it just bad. I was in the bath, and I just was like, oh, let's get this tea in the... Oh, God! Oh, right man. on the old wiener. Yup. Tea on the wiener. It's not as kinky as you thought it would be. Nope. No, it's not That's hot not wax, fun. which can be a degree <laughs> of kinky, yeah. fun, and sexy, but mm-hmm. just like scalding hot tea right on the old bean bags. Not gonna feel good. <laughs> Much worse than Rex. Yeah. 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 I'm, just, I'm oh, sorry I'm about your crotch, though. I'm, I'm no, sorry. Okay. No, it wasn't too bad. It's not the worst tea-related burn I've had in my body. What's the worst tea-related burn <laughs> you've ever had um, in your body? Well, since you asked, uh, like 10 years ago, I spilled tea right out of the pot. This was about, you know, like three or four minutes after I poured it. So it was cooled down a lot. Right out of the pot, all over my side. Actually got like second degree burns and a oh. still and a scar I still have. Oh shit! Yup. That I was like, that's fucking raw, man. It was. Tea can be hardcore. Yeah. Tell people like tell people that's like a sex injury. They'll want to fuck you <laughs> for days. That's very faint. You can just kind of look at it. You have to get real up close. But there it is. Oh man. Looks like hand. So, like, it looks like hand marks on you. It's very, very pro- apropos because, you know, you go. Death, Death Stranding. There you go. There it is. Oh, we did it. Jesus. Popular, popular IP right here on the SoxCast. You heard it first right here. I also have a little bit of pencil graphite stuck in my leg from in first grade when I was leaning back oh, in my I chair. Oh, I remember this. I remember this. I told you about this? Yeah, you've told us about this. <sighs> but I think you tell tell the story on the podcast, but you have told me personally about this. <laughs> I, I was... Leaning back in my chair, first grader, just playing with a pencil, stuck the pencil between the chair and my leg, point first on my leg, and then I just fell forward because I slipped, and I just stabbed <laughs> right through the jeans into my leg. Oh, and it was very much like a. I like, really should have seen this one coming, huh? Yeah, that's a. <laughs> I will forgive first grader John. I know. <laughs> when they talk about tea bagging, they don't mean literally. <laughs> Socks cast. So. You're home for tea related injuries. Yep. You're home for humorous John injuries. Yeah. Like I like all John injuries are humorous to me, especially when he breaks his humor. 
Ha! Ha! I made the funny. I I reeled it on in. I reeled it on in. It was the funniest yeah, joke in the world. Not at home. And I just that's, that's told her. We line them up on the tee, and then she just flings them home. Boom! Buy the Sox cast home game right now. I don't home plate. Go to Kickstarter. <laughs> Back it. It's a board game where you make all the funny jokes. What are we Go doing? buy our board game where we make actually funny jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you write the jokes for us ahead of time, and then we'll be sure to use them on the podcast. Please do our podcast for us. We're so tired of doing it. <laughs> it's such a pain just coming, talking about video games with friends. Why do I have to talk it's, to my friends? Yeah. I know, right? This is the most agonizing part of my two weeks. Oh, obviously. But we suffer through anyway, because we know... Oh, I don't know about that, Polly. <laughs> oh, there's some agony yesterday. <laughs> we'll probably talk about that later, but I hear that John Thayer... Wants, yeah. to, wants to talk about things, and, well, this is the platform that he... Where it's the only time he I, ever gets to do it, so... It's true. It's the only time we listen. Yes. <laughs> it's the only time that I will give him any of my time or attention. So uh, use, it, played, use it wisely. So, so remember last time when I played Devil May Cry 1? Mm-hmm. I did start Devil May Cry 3. And he cried like a little bitch. And it was very hard. And I was crying. Very it's hard. a hard... It's a pretty hard video game. <laughs> Very hard video game, and I play. And I, I heard that um, I, I sent it to the checkpointing system they used to the original U.S. release, because mm-hmm. I figured that was like, you know, that's that's good. That's a good scene, right? Right, right. Uh, and that makes it much harder because <laughs> there's no checkpoints besides at the start of the level. Yeah. So it's, again, yeah. it's Mega Man Zero One style, like Devil May Cry One, and I, I figured I'd be Devil May Cry One, so I can do it this one, right? <laughs> it's so much harder. It is. Even if the normal enemies will fuck your day up. It's so hard. The like, there was like one fight in the original where I was like really paying attention to like parrying and getting all the timing right. It was the first Virgil fight. Yeah, I like got that one down. And I learned it. And then like this game, the second state, the very first <laughs> boss, not even like the big boss. Which apparently I said, oh man, the first boss is kicking my ass, and they thought I was talking about the Cerberus. Yeah, we thought you were talking. Me. No, you were talking about the guy outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the guy outside the actual game. <laughs> the guy outside the first room. <laughs> the guy, you step outside the first room, <laughs> this guy comes out, and he starts kicking my ass. It, it, to, be, to be fair, it's a pretty hard encounter if you're blind it to it. I mean, it, I beat it on, like, my second or third try, because it's like, oh, okay, I, I get what it is now. But even then, it's still, like, after three minutes of beating up other mobs. So it's just like, okay, and I don't have any checkpoints. This is great. Yeah, like, this uh, game starts out with, like, a three-minute combat arena, and mm-hmm. then the enemies aren't that difficult or aggressive, and then the, the second you step outside, it's just this one big <laughs> flying enemy that is a pain in the ass. And then I got to the Cerberus thing, and it took me, like, <laughs> two and a half hours! <laughs> It was so hard. Like, I was just like, I, I, like that game does not. One. That game does not fuck around. Like, like it is so front loaded with hard ass bosses. It uh. literally, it wants to beat you into submission from the start. <laughs> it was like this take. This is taking me as long as Ornstein and Smog did, and then I beat it, and then like a couple levels later, they had to fight Ornstein and Smog. Yeah, and they, they were, you literally were, have to do. fight. To like Andre and Rudra, to like that that fight is so ridiculous to be that early in the game. So much. I mean, they do the thing where like if they're not on camera, they mostly just stay stand yeah, still. Yeah. Um. So basically, the second I, I couldn't figure out both Cerberus and Ornstein and Smog. If they got to their second phases, I was just like, well, what do I do? Ball game, folks. I don't know what to do now. I don't know how to deal damage to these people while also not getting damaged. This is impossible. So I, both of them, I figured out a way where I can just like, if you just like, you can basically stun lock a server so you can kill him before he transitions to the second phase. Mm-hmm. And then you can beat the, and you can beat, fight both of the two guys equally so that when they transition yeah, to that's the second what I phase, do. which happens when one of them dies, they have very little health. It's not like Ornstein and Smog where they, their health goes back to full. So I made it through, barely. And then I stopped playing for like two weeks. <laughs> That game, like you're now at the point where like there's one more boss that's gonna be a pain. 
That's, Damn it. That's going to be a pain in the ass because the camera they chose for it is god awful. But after you, that, it's like a it's like a run of like eight or nine stages that are just like, "Okay, this feels good." Oh, thank god. All right, I'll get that. Did you beat the original US release? Yes. Okay. The, cool. I, so I that, have both, so I've I've played through that game a number of times. Cool. I wanted to I wanted to confirm that just so, so long as you that's the way you Yeah, if, I played through the first, first, god yeah. intended. Yeah, I played through the original. I made that joke on a different channel, um, and I was like, well, this is how people beat it back in the day. And then somebody said, nobody beat it, John. <laughs> everybody quit you and went to play, everybody quit and went and played God of War because that came out the same week. <laughs> oh man, like I remember like online discourse about those two games being so oh. fucking insufferable. <laughs> Well, but like the de- the uh, like I think the dev teams actually wished each other well. Like they sent each other like because they they were coming out like at the same time, and I think both teams actually were just like, "Yo, good job on your good video game," and like that Aww. was good. But like the fan bases were just fucking misery. <laughs> yeah, so funny. <sighs> That's still the best God of War game, right? The first one. Yeah, I don't know because I have not played two or three. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, they seem real bad. They they seem like like two and three just kind of seem like more of the same, and then mm-hmm. and then uh, then there's Chains of Olympus or whatever that's like the really bad rehash. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's the remake, which like it, that game has got weird revisionist history because now I hear people say that game's bad. The God of War. That. When that game came out, like, like when that game came yeah. out, it was like, oh man, Dad of the Year. This is the best shit. But like, mm-hmm. I hear people talk about that game now, and they're just like, yeah, it's actually kind of a slog and boring. Like, well, you liked it a year ago. Why don't you like it now? <laughs> it's okay to change your mind. It is. It is. You go back and you change your review score, and it's okay. <laughs> there you go. Lower the Metacritic. Lower the Metacritic why is, rating. Why is it up there? That's why Giant it's Bomb fine. put out that two star Death Stranding review. <laughs> oh, was it two stars? Even oh, it was two stars, and he <laughs> reasoned and he reasoned it out very well. But mm-hmm. it, it, so it's hard to argue against it without yeah. sounding like you're just pissed off because he gave it a two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's tasty. I yeah. watched a bit of that quick look and was just oh like, "Oh my yeah, god!" I not watched for me. I watched that quick look and almost fell asleep. <laughs> Death Stranding is like I did a funny poll on uh, yeah. on Twitter about who's going to be the Sox cast host to break and buy Death Stranding, <laughs> and I ended up winning. What is wrong yeah. with you people? Why do you think I'm the you're one the that's going to buy? You're Death... the Kojima fan. You played MGS Five. Yeah, I... that's kind of a big one. I played you... MGS Five, but like this it. game is an like Death Stranding is literally an emphasis on everything I didn't like about. MGS five. <laughs> it definitely looks visually similar though. Like oh, the, yeah. you can see the evolution there. Yeah. Like even just like the UI, everything about yeah. it is just like, very stuff like, like that where it's like mm. I've still played MGS one, two, and three, and I'm just like, oh man, I love Kojima games. Dude, play it's great. four. Play four. It's stupid. <laughs> four is <laughs> stupid and amazing. I know. I'm gonna play it Oh, uh, there's there's stuff I want to I don't think John will ever get to four. <laughs> No, I'm I, I, I'm probably gonna play it. And I know everything about it because I watched a spoilery bit. It was back when I still would like read spoilery crap oh. about games I want is interested in. So I won't know most of what happens in it. I mean, four is basically the one that made write it into a cyborg ninja, right? Yeah, yeah, just good. Like, it is so dumb and so anime. Yeah, it's mm. dumb and it's dumb in all the best possible ways. Like, I love the absurd. Like when when that game was out, there were so many people pissed off. About just like, oh my god, nano machines. He explains everything yeah. really stupidly. I'm the one that was sitting there in that chair, grinning ear to ear the whole time. This is for me. This was <laughs> all made for me. This is my and, kind and of And this stupid. is why you won that poll, because you are, were the Kojima fan. Okay, the Kojima okay. super fan. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the Kojima super fan. Alright, which, which one of us here has played through all of Snatcher? Have any of us played Snatcher? I thought Polly played Snatcher. Didn't no, we talk about that with um... I have played Snatcher. I have okay. not completed it. Oh. I, it, I, I didn't think it was that great. And I don't oh. think Police Knots is that great either. More like Police Knots. I huh? looked up I looked up Kojima games when I was making that joke about you being the super fan, and I was like, oh, Police Knots. I, I don't 
have I heard of that? Oh, I didn't know that was a Kojima thing. And they are over here, yeah, I've sampled that one. <laughs> I don't really like it that much, but I played it. I, like, like, I, I, I played Read Only Memories, which is like a yeah. send-up to those games. And mm. I liked that a lot. And Valhalla. I think that's when, when we brought it up. Mm. Valhalla is, 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 I think, uniquely its own kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it. So, so of the people here, the one who's most likely to buy break and vibe death stranding isn't the one that has played basically every kojima game up until <laughs> yeah. now yeah. yeah okay just okay. confirm it. like i'm not Guess a kojima what? super fan i don't like, think it, yeah unless it's john unless john is the one who ends up buying it yeah it's not me <laughs> every single one of us is like well it's obviously like, i could me. see <laughs> i can see one of john's like Probably, friends with bad opinions <laughs> convinc- yeah. convincing him that boring and suffering is good video game I already believe that, though. But he already believes... See, like, that's why I figured, like, oh, Death Stranding, it's it's just boredom, tedium, and suffering. John will love it! Again, I was also kind of on board with that Red idea. Like and then Breath I... of the Wild, though, and that's all boredom and tedium. Oh, and everybody stuff. loves Breath of the Wild. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, like, You're that game is all second. boredom and tedium. Why <laughs> does everybody like it? That game's amazing. Game of I, the love year. Climbing, I love climbing very slowly up very large cliffs. <laughs> Says Red. I wonder why <laughs> I, Red would like Death Stranding. Anyways, I was watching a video on Kojima's history uh-huh. of how he got started in the game industry. And it is weird how he does Metal Gear and then Snatcher and Police Knots. And I was imagining like this alternate history where instead of MGS1 being this huge breakout hit, mm-hmm. he just continued to make high budget VNs, basically. Yeah, like he would have been like the one to make to. I the Somnium Files. <laughs> it is, it would be fu- kind of funny if that ended up being his career path. Yeah, yeah. Instead of where we are now, unfortunately. <laughs> where we are now with like, oh, look, I'm Mr. Starfucker. Look at all yeah, the famous that people too. that I know. Look at all these movies that I want to make, but nobody in Hollywood will give me money, so I have to make video games instead. I think he just straight up said that their next thing is just going to be a movie now. <laughs> Like, his Kojima production. Well, I think that, like, he's in the position to be able to do that now because he has yeah. sucked off enough movie stars. <laughs> I think I saw the end The end cut scene of Death Stranding is, like, literally two hours yeah, long. It's, it's... Like, he's already <laughs> making movies. He's making fucking miniseries. Like, the, the Metal Gear Solid 4's ending is 81 minutes, so it's, you know, just a, a fucking cut scene. So we're not, we're not that far, you know, it's not that unbelievable with Death Stranding. God, I haven't heard anyone comment on Mads Mikkelsen in that yet. Because he barely has a role in it. Uh, it's like apparently it's that Kiefer Sutherland thing mm. of where we can't really book them for too long because they're expensive. Mm. So we get as much as we can out of them, and then we work with it. Oh, that's a bummer. Because mm-hmm. he's very hot. All right, but yeah, that's um, he was in Han- he was Hannibal. He was Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, he was very. Oh, yeah. yeah, just just clarify <laughs> clarification. Um. Don't make cry. So I finished. So yeah, I, I put that down because that it was, was a really, diversion. Because it was really, really hard. Um, so uh, of course it was like so hard that I was just like, I need to play a baby. I need to play an RPG. <laughs> I need to play something for babies that I can just play on my Vita on the on the bus. It'll be like like you know like Fate Grand Order, but I don't want to play Fate Grand Order right now. So let's see. I'll play Sweet Coden because I really liked Alliance Alive. So I bought Sweet Coden because that has the same head writer. Mm. Oh, so that interesting. was that was the that was the arc is that Alliance Alive that RPG that contemporary RPG that was like pretty okay I liked it um, I, I I complained about the climax on here but it was a nice it was a nice time right right I, I um, wondered how we jumped the ship to Suikoden, Suikoden. because I had it's not be- heard you talk about that game or have very much interest in it in the past mm. it just seemed really yeah. random to me. It was straight. It was a straight line from liking Alliance Alive. I, I bought. I finished Alliance Alive. I was like, I like that. I bought Legend Legend of Legacy because I was the That's same the... team without this guy. So mm-hmm. it's just it's mo it's more saga, I think. And then I bought this one because I wanted more from this writer. Um, and that you can real you can really tell because it's the same story. <laughs> You start Alliance Alive, and there's an evil empire, and you slowly go around the whole world, accumulating different people. You talk to every random person in town so that they can join your group. And then you get, like, 100 people, and then you go and fight the evil bad guy and defeat the empire. It's 108. 
John. The 108 stars of destiny. Yeah. The only day in sweet Coden, in um, Alliance Alive, you just have like 12 party members that you can switch between. Mm-hmm. And then the other people you recruit, you assign out to the yeah, different to fields, do which roles and powers time. up. Yeah. Things. Um, which is probably a lot smarter. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Um, so sweet Coden 1 is very, is pretty bad. I played all of that in like four days. It was pretty easy to do so because it's only like 13 hours long. Yeah, it's remarkably mm. short. It's short to the point where you wonder, like, if they just ran out of time or money while they were making it. Hmm. Hmm. Big hmm. think. Big think. Big think. So it's exactly the same as Suikoden as Alliance Live, except, like, Alliance Live does a really good job of, like, dramatizing the ways that the evil empire has is hurting you and makes it a very good intimidating force. So we go in one doesn't really do that. It just cut it. Ha- it introduces a cool lady and then kills her. And then is like, all right, now you hate them. Right. Right. Now you hate the empire. Right. Right. Uh, and it's extra weird because your, your character is like the son of like a famous general for the evil empire. And you're like a devoted servant to them. And you bow down to the emperor. And then like, Three and then like an hour later, you're no, I'm I'm leading the rebellion actually. Just um, boom, like this that. lady I had one scene with died. There's like two scenes in the whole game where they just that just exist to teach you like about a character's internality and make them like express themselves mm-hmm. and their feelings, and then they immediately die. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just like okay, we need to shit, we need to make people feel things. Uh uh uh, kill then, a woman quick. And then for the rest, and oh my god, the scene when she dies is so bad because it's just like she like leaps in front of a child to <laughs> save the child, and then like says to you, "I'm sorry, I couldn't. In the end, I couldn't be the. I was a woman instead of the leader of the rebellion, just like because <laughs> she wanted to protect the uh, child. It's pretty. It's pretty great. Oh yeah, good justification. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you just want to move, like killing women, like the blood of women turns out to be just that ultimate oil to move any clunky plot forward. Um, it certainly isn't Sweet Coden. It has, like, no humanity to, like, any of the writing. Because everybody talks like Fantasy Star 2 characters. Oh, and yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. And the and the presentation of big story events is exactly like that. It's so stilted and crappy. It's so... And, like, I can accept that in Fantasy Star 2 because that was 1989. If I'm playing... This is 1995. This came out the same year as Chrono Trigger. Yeah. This came out after Chrono Trigger. Yeah. It even has a spooky, like, vampire castle. And you, I just, like, at one point pulled up a YouTube video of that castle and then pulled up Megs' <laughs> castle and just kind of, like, jumped back and forth. Just like, man. Boy, y'all. Y'all, <laughs> y'all really didn't have this figured out, did you? Y'all were, y'all have not made an RPG before, huh? Yep. You, sh- you are, it was just, it's so, like, it comes kind of close to being, like, Falcom, Soul Blazer. Oh, you just made this nice, humble little thing. Almost. Um, and, I, oh, and I appreciate that. But the reason Soul Blazer and like older, smaller Falcom games work is because they're humble and then they completely succeed at what they're trying to, the humble thing they're trying to accomplish. Exactly. So Conan tries to do very little and cannot accomplish it. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't even do good with the very little it's trying to ask of itself. I beat the final boss, and then the game ended, and I didn't realize that I was on the last level or the final <laughs> boss. Because there's no final boss theme. Nope. Just place okay. the boss theme. Great. Again, Fantasy Star 2. Um, <laughs> well, at least it has a very unique mother brain sprite. At least it has a... At least it's... Yeah, the, it has good... It has a good final boss. And the boss before that is good, too. Yes. Um, death, death Clock. Death Stranding. Wait. Dark Fells? Dark Fowls, Dark Force. <laughs> Dark Stranding. Dark Stranding. Dark Boy. But Fire Boy. Fireball. Fireball Boy. Do you, do you think when Chrono Trigger came out that other studios making RPGs were like, oh, shit, shit. You think shit. they had to pump the brakes real quick and be like, oh, the shit has changed. I really hope that they that the Sweet Cone devs play Chrono Trigger. They're just like, oh, man. Oh, it's man. some inspiration from it. I don't know. No, I think, I think they had, I think they must have had just like a very tight dev time because they were getting it out early in the PS1 yeah, life cycle. Like yeah. this definitely seems like get out there and be the first one they talk about. Just get it out the door. And I think it worked. Yeah. Like, people still talk about this game. Even though it has... Yeah. 
even though it's missing like two hours at the end of the game. It just that's what it feels like. It just feels like they didn't do the final dungeon because like the main villain is the evil woman that's mind controlling all the good noble general men into being evil. Um, and then you kill the emperor, you beat the emperor, and then the evil woman appears, and then the emperor just murder suicides her. Just like, <laughs> cool. Just like, okay, I guess we're not gonna fight the main villain ever, ever. And all, and also we're just gonna have the the other big w- woman character just be like com- unceremoniously dispatched by a man she trusts. Cool, great. Just need a little blood to grease those wheels. There you go. Like the plot, the plot was it, it was chugging a little bit. You gotta get some of that woman blood in there. We're good. We're good. <laughs> that's that's what it is. Um, and. And the best part is, you know how there's like 108 characters and a bunch of them you can join in your party? Mm-hmm. For most of the game, um, they lock like three or four characters of your six-person party at all times. Like you have to play with these three characters. Yeah. Including mm-hmm. the last dungeon. Yeah. What? <laughs> it locks three of the characters solely so they can have a dramatic moment during the very yeah. meager escape sequence at the end. It's so So, good. And you need to bring four party members, four specific party members to the ultimate blacksmith in order to get him to join your team. And I tried doing that after getting to this dungeon, and I was locked to the three three party members, so I couldn't. Whoops. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoops. I was just like, if you if you don't get all the all the Destiny stars before the last big um, strategy game battle, then you don't get to, you don't get them. It's done. Because you, you wow. get locked to these three people in your party. Yep. That was the other big reason I assumed, I assumed that there was going to be more. Yeah. And then the ending itself is like three minutes long. It's mo- And then and then there's like five minutes of like flashing through all 108 characters of the one sentence thing of this is what they went and did afterwards. Charlie ate a hamburger. Charlie ate a hamburger. It's, oh boy. It's a little, it's a little comparable with like Fire Emblem, but it's an RPG. So it feels even worse than if it's a strategy game. Man, it's hard to feel worse than Fire Emblem. It's hard to feel worse than Fire Emblem. It almost manages it. Ooh, uh, ooh. Oh, man. The strategy game battles are just completely silly. They're like... Oh, they're so bad. Like, I, I, get, I have always hated that aspect of that series. You get, that's like, the, yeah. I mean, I played this game when it came out and didn't really think anything of it. Besides, mm-hmm. But the only thing I remember is those strategy battles being kind of a unique gimmick at the time. Because everything else was so generic and bare bones. Yeah, but see, like, how... I'm the kind of person yeah, they're probably where not actually good. I'm play- if I'm playing a game, I'm not here to play your dumb mini game. I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to fucking force me to do it. I don't want to. <laughs> this is Polly's new shtick is absolute... 100 percent pure hatred of mini games. <laughs> I, I have always hated mini games. It's true. But you have Twilight really, Princess. you've doubled down on it. I probably have, I, but as I get older, I get more grumpy. That's all it is. <laughs> you just get more grumpy when you get older, and I think that's justified. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things to be grumpy about, Rhett, and mini games just happens to be one of them. I will. I don't know if you've actually gotten worse, because, man, sumo wrestling in Zelda. Woo! You quit quit you an quit. entire video sure game over it. said, fuck you, I'm not doing this. And then you never you And never, never that. went so back. Out. I own a copy I, of that. I, I thought you that. got a friend to beat it for you. No, I was going to. I was going to send it to somebody to do it, and then save afterward, and nobody ever took me up on it. Uh, uh, that's it. Twilight Princess fans, you can't can't trust them. Nope. Can't trust them. They never follow I mean, I think I would have, but it was so long after the fact at that point. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> I'm so spiteful. <laughs> like, we love fuck you. your we entire love you video it. game for this one bad part. <laughs> I'm literally Poncho Smith. <laughs> Jet Storm 4 in the chat is offering to do it for <laughs> you. See, there you Aww. go. Jet Storm. Jet Storm. Jet Storm's a real one. He's a real one. Yeah. Like if I one of the Twilight, one of the real Twilight Princess fans that you exactly. cannot trust. If I <laughs> also a Twilight Princess fan, you should not trust. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, Dom. That's just how it goes. <laughs> I have a lot of Twilight Princess fans, fr- fan friends. It's just you know, there's a little, there's a little wall up, just like <laughs> just a little bit of arm's length between us. Mm. You know, just do you, I don't know what you're capable of. You know, five times, five. Oh times. my god, he has played that game five times. Oh dear lord. 
I can see playing that game exactly twice. Once when it came out and once when they did the remake. <laughs> Life is good. So is your code. Um, the, the, it's a shame that the, that the interesting and unique parts, the rock, paper, scissors um, strategy battles and the one-on-one things, which basically are the same, um, are really janky because everything else is just dry as a stone. Ugh, yeah, there's yeah. just there's nothing. I mean, but, but if you just get like two thieves in your party, then you can use a move that tells you what the next character, what their next attack is going to be. And once you understand the rock paper scissors thing, I did not fail a single oh my strategy God. battle after the first one. Like That's it's just amazing. trivial. Like I I got I got to the last one and it was like twenty thousand versus of their characters versus sixteen thousand and I got down <laughs> down to zero and I had fifteen thousand characters because I just you just get I accumulated like five sets of ninjas and thieves to just tell me what their <laughs> next move is going to be and then because it's rock paper scissors I just oh well I do this instead. Um. So it. it it went from being really obnoxious because the first time I it took me two times to beat it, and then the game froze and it took me three <laughs> more times to beat it. Oh, oh no, that's the worst. And there's a five minute cutscene right before it. <laughs> Always good. Like man, RPGs were real good about that back in the day, huh? Oh boy. Yeah, they got better about that. They did, thankfully. Oh, I, the boy. most the most scary one ever was in Zeno Gears, like because there's like a. Oh. I think it was like a 35 minute cutscene before a boss fight, <laughs> and that Why? game's te- and that game's text scrolls really slow. <laughs> you can't speed it up at all. God, that's funny. Yeah, yeah right. that was one of those. If I lose this boss fight, I'm never playing this video game again, am I? <laughs> like that's just it. Like yeah. I'm never doing it. I was gonna say if it was Polly doing the sweet code in playthrough after losing. Having the game crash and then having to do it three more times, I think she'd be like, "Okay, I'm done. We're done." Like this. Well, We're the game done. also before that gates progress behind winning a dice gamble mini game. <laughs> oh yeah, I and remember. it took me six tries. <laughs> you know what this is? This is when I got stonewalled in Trails Third by the fishing mini game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that thing blatantly fucking cheats. That legitimately got me for like an hour. I was like. <laughs> Fuck this! Uh, watching, it's watching, like I had a lot of fun watching after five get fucked in the fishing mini game by like one or two pounds. It was so good. So, basically, because Sweet Coden was like almost felt like a tr- like Falcom games, like it was like I was looking at someone playing Trails from across the room, like through a coffee, <laughs> like a used coffee filter. I was like, this is this is almost like I'm playing something I like. Maybe it'll get good. And it kept tricking me into thinking it was going to get good for the entire game. And then that limp, flaccid, <laughs> wet fart of a finale <laughs> just hit me so wrong. I was mad. So, John, what would you score this game? Um, A 2 out of 10 if Sweet Code oh. 2 is bad. And then a 3 out of 10 if Sweet Code 2 is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's pretty sincere actually it is yeah. it is I did, I, bump, don't... I did bump it up to a three after sweet code and two like oh so i played it okay so that was that is the punchline is that the next day i started up sweet code and two yeah the like next why day. would you do that why like that would have been my cue is like we're one. done because because sweet code and one ends on such like an empty like half-baked note i was just like i don't even feel like i've finished the experience Obviously, what I need to do yeah. now is just load up the next one. So, Coden 1 somehow ends on an E sharp, and that's not even possible. <laughs> it, I mean, so Coden oh. 2 is the one I've always heard is, quote, the good one. Yeah. Yes. It's the number start... 10 game, according to SMPS. On Liter- the... <laughs> Literally, I started up Coden 2, and it was just like, oh, so you tried this time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm glad. Thank you for trying this time. Good job. Um, I, I talked to some friends about it, and apparently, like, this was the game they pitched. Like, they pitched Konami, Sweet Code 2. And then Konami was like, uh, oh, sounds kind of weird and Scale risky. Scale it back. And then they're like, what if we made a much smaller game and based it on an old Chinese novel? Um, and we're not going to care about it or try because this isn't going <laughs> to be a game we really wanted to make. And they're like, sure, go for it. And then they did. And they made Sweet Code 1. And then, three, and then in 98, they released Sweet Code 2. And it was like, and it's much immediately like 
I'm not going to say it's better because it could totally shit the bed. I don't know. Um, but, like, texturally, it is so much better and nicer. Like, the way characters talk. It well, the localization feel... is quite a bit more. Like, in 1995, yeah. 96, localization still hadn't reached a point of being, like, super good yet. Good. Yeah. So, so Coden 2 having a better localization doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but even then, like, you, if you compare Suikoden 1 with, like, Final Fantasy 5 or 6, like, there's no... It's just so... Yeah, it's bone dry even compared to those. Like, because yeah. Final Fantasy 6 has a really good localization despite its limitations. Yeah, so Suikoden 2 is just like... Oh, okay. So now you're talking like actual humans, and also the characters are really well animated. Like they introduce the main, not Nanami, not some the main girl, and she just has like this really cute, good series of like almost Looney Tunesy animations as she mm -hmm. runs up and tackle hugs the main character, and then she's on the ground. And she like looks up, and then it's like does a thinky face, like she's doing another thing. It's like like actually emotes. It's like six different animations like, in a row that are all, like, custom. Um, and it's it's almost, like... Like, it's, it's well ahead of, like, SNES RPGs. Like, it's very well done. And a lot of scenes in the game carry that level animation. There's a lot of good, like, violence. Like, when they call when they call for, like, a scene that needs to be dramatic and violent, like, it's basically like Final Fantasy Tactics, where, like, we're gonna do this stab animation a real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why John likes this game. The game's definitely got a lot more of that. Yeah. So, and also the palette, the, it, it's just prettier. It's like, brighter. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's a wider palette. I think somebody mentioned yeah. that uh, earlier, I think it was actually Tengu, that the first game may have actually been an SNES CD game at one point, mm -hmm. but then it kind of might have had to have been rushed to just get it out for the PlayStation. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if that's confirmed or not, but that's kind of the theory that I saw posited in chat earlier. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me because Suikoden One is not very pretty. No, it's it's yeah, it's pretty ugly. Suikoden Two, Suikoden Two is very pretty. Yeah, it's got a nice wide palette of colors. Mm -hmm. Um, I did post that one video of the. There's like one inexplicable like going between two castle towers. Oh yeah, with no uh, parallax sky, at all. <laughs> but there's no parallax on the background, so it's just like you're walking in front of a painting. It sucks. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> but most of the game is very pretty. The battles, the battles in both games are very fast. Like, oh that's yeah, what made, it's a snappy that's battle the, system. That's what made the first game at all palatable. Is that like, well, this isn't bad, but it is fast, so it'll be over quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll keep playing. And, like, you progress in levels really fast in those games. Like, almost, it, you progress so fast that to the point that it almost feels like leveling doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. It's like a thousand experience points per level, I think. And then you're, it's like, it's the trail system, but, like, even more aggressively. Scaled. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely put uh -huh. the, pump the brakes on you real fast. Mm -hmm. They want you to be able to pull, and at any point you can pull one of these level four characters you haven't touched the whole mm -hmm. game, put them in your party... And then, like, three level, three battles later, they're on par with everyone else. Yeah. It's it, it's wild. Um, because they want you to be able to use all the different characters, except when they lock up half your party, <laughs> for some reason. Um, someone made a... A friend made a joke at me, like, now you can dislike Chrono Cross for another reason, that it's not even the first disappointing JRPG to be sold on the million characters gimmick. That's a good point. <laughs> at least we couldn't have six yeah. characters in your party instead of three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So the the many many characters almost works except that they lock up the party the whole game. Yeah, uh, I was so, thinking like instead of them being inspired by Chrono Trigger, ter Chrono Cross looked at them and was like, "Oh, what if we have a bunch of boring flat characters?" Yeah, won't that be great? <laughs> we'll take one of the worst elements. They're just like literally running around the office talking to the secretary. So who do you think should be a character in an RPG? I want an alien from space. <laughs> Let's put a mermaid there. Let's put a mermaid in. Hey, remember John, Luca? John would be the one unironically suggesting mermaid. Yeah, that's true. Or Mermaid's spider okay. lady. Okay, mermaid is good actually, but yeah, but you know, it's the same thing. But you can uh, only use her in the one underwater dungeon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing with with um, Sweet Cone One is that. The reason I kept with it, and then the reason I jumped into Suikoden 2, is that I liked that it wasn't stupid, which 
like it's like I, t- I compare it with like Falcom games where like it's just this kind of nice simple story about fighting this evil empire mm-hmm. is bone dry and it doesn't land but it's not dumb which basically all square ps1 rpgs were yeah at the time <laughs> even when they're good like i like final fantasy 7 but I it's still them, dumb but they're still dumb and when See, i played falcom games it was a revelation because i was like oh this isn't dumb this is nice. I like playing an RPG that's a PS1 RPG that's not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I feel uh, like I'm being attacked by John right now somehow. <laughs> I did have a thought in my head. I was like, well, it's better than Simple Gear at least. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. Ooh. I like stupid things, obviously. And that's completely fair. I do too. It's just nice. Sometimes. To, it's nice to have an alternate flavor. Because I, I play almost exclusively Square RPGs. Like, yeah. if I look at my list of RPGs i played, it is probably 80% Square RPGs. But it's nice to play ones from this era that aren't that exact flavor. Um, like, like if Suicoden 2 land, like, Suicoden 2 totally is, like, sort of halfway between Trails and Final Fantasy VI, I think. Mm. Um, and I really like that. I think that, that's really, that really treats me yeah. nice. Um, so I'm going to see how the rest of it treats me. All right, go. It's good. They're a nice short first segment to launch the podcast. <laughs> right. Oh, what boy. have you been up to? Uh, I finished a game. It's a visual novel. Oh, all right. Holly talked about it, so I'm not sure how much I can really add about it. Uh, I played I the Somnium Files. I love oh, that shit. video yeah. game. Oh boy. <laughs> Got some thoughts about I the Somnium you fin- Files? Did you finish right? this one. Hmm. You finished this one? I finished it. Yeah. Oh about man. About a week ago. Uh, so here's the thing. <laughs> Uh-oh. This is going to make this a little tricky. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Polly, Polly really loved this video game. I love the fucking shit out of this video game. I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. I think it might be her game of the year, not to say anything. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't read your mind, but that's the vibe I'm getting. I'm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, hmm, I liked this game. Mm-hmm. It left me a little cold in some places. Mm-hmm. And this is where Polly jumps through the microphone <laughs> <laughs> to stab me to death. <laughs> I don't have my fork, so you're safe. <laughs> Actually, wait, 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 wait. No, nope, don't have a fork. Ah. We had this really nice thing where we're kind of mutually all bashing on Suicoden One, but now it now the conflict comes. <laughs> how how will we result? Last week it was me and Rhett. How will this week's? How will this week's like? Um, no, I war definitely of the did not. Casters resolve. Now that since Rhett hated I apparently. Yeah. See, I didn't hate I. I just okay. So the. Probably the biggest teller is that I finished this game, like I finished the big final climax, mm-hmm. and thought there still might be more. Oh, because mm-hmm. I thought, well, it went pretty big, but not big enough for me. But because I like really big dumb things. That game goes real big and dumb at the end, though. <laughs> I, I think that game's poly. real big and reasonably dumb. I know, but. I just thought there might be more because there's basically there's two main issues that they have to resolve Mm -hmm. and they do one of them. And I was like, well, there must be another route because they have to do the other thing. And then it kind of gets resolved off screen. And I was like, oh, I think everybody in chat's got it right. You didn't go to space. Zero out of ten. Rhett wanted some explosions in space. Not a zero out of ten, Polly. He'd give it. He'd give it at least a five out of ten. Oh, Jesus Christ! That's, that's after he. I would still. That's after he gives it a seven. Then two days later, goes back, revises it to a five. Just to be clear, I didn't do that. I took it to a seven, and then lowered it to a six, like a couple weeks later, and then a couple weeks after that, lowered it to a five. <laughs> uh, anyway, Red. This is still Red versus John through proxy, Polly. <laughs> Continue, Rat. I totally lost my train. You, you hate I, I the Somnium Files. I don't hate, hate I the Somnium Files. I just and think Paul, and Polly by proxy. You know, yeah, and you hate me by proxy. By. <laughs> you, Polly, he you know literally the... he took himself off of my family sharing. He hated this game that much. Oh, he just didn't God. even want to see the title come up in the library anymore. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be real weird when this still makes my top ten. Huh? <laughs> Like, it's it's still in that consideration. It's the game that made me go, mm, I've got, like, 12 games here. Shit, this is going to be tight, huh? Okay, so 
I mean, obviously, you can't really talk about the thing that yeah. didn't land because I mean that's mm -hmm. spoiler no, I definitely territory. Want to talk about the actual ending, mm -hmm. but like, I think this author, who, what's his name again, Ukoshi, Kataru Ukoshi, yeah, has a very has a very kind of set style that he does, mm -hmm. and he doesn't go quite as big as something like you know Dagon Rapa does with its extremely big dumb anime catharsis endings and i think that that's fair um yeah, his yeah, ending just... his endings while they are absurd and do go absolutely insane danganronpa goes way bigger and i think that yeah. sort of like the contrast you get is that in i the somnium files that game is like the way that its story and dialogue is presented it gives you that impression of both it is both very well grounded but it is mm. also kind of fucking stupid <laughs> it's kind of fucking stupid I think but this game in particular because it's I don't know how to word this like this game almost goes out of its way to troll people who played the Zero Escape series I can I can feel a bit of that yeah <laughs> like uh, I really want to watch my words carefully but the, <laughs> everyone's just <laughs> dumping on me and <laughs> Mizuki's super good. Mizuki like is that. like like it like Mizuki and Miriam are like character of the year material. Like mm -hmm. both of them, like I just want them both to be characters of the year. Because I have I like Wait. it's hard to think of two characters I enjoyed more than Miriam and Mizuki. Who's Miriam? Wander Song? Oh <laughs> right, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Well, she apparently doesn't matter to Rhett at the, all. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the name of the girl in uh, <laughs> the Castlevania reboot thing? Um, Carmilla? I think she's Miriam as well. Yeah, that's who my mind went to. And I was like, the fuck is Polly talking about? Wow. <laughs> she's character of the year. No, I've mean, wow, not, even, not even played that game. But I'm I willing, know. I'm willing to I give it a I thought that shot. was a weird poll. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be weird. I think one of Okay, so here's the thing I can say about I the Somnium Files mm -hmm. that was maybe a little weird to me. Okay. I think the true ending maybe not my favorite one. Yeah, I can actually see that. The, the Mizuki ending is so good. Well, yeah. The the Mizuki route, like, there's so much feeling in that route that yeah. uh like that's like one of the moments on stream where I actually feel like if whoops, yeah. forgot forgot to press the like, I'm crying button. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I remember in Zero Time Dilemma, the most like moving part of that game oh, yeah. was the wasn't the main ending. It was the yeah. we were locked in the place for eight months thing. Yeah, like yeah, that's the real, best part of that game. real yeah, good. But... And and I think that like the thing is like Uchikoshi himself has said that like the true ending doesn't imply that that is like the only ending or that is the true ending, the true true ending. Like that is just what <laughs> yeah. we've come to call it. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of just, like, the, the, the vernacular that we use. Yeah, structurally. Mm -hmm. He said that all the endings are valid, and he's fine with any of them being a canon mm -hmm. ending. Like, he said he wrote them all from that point of view that any of them could be the ending, and it would be fine. Mm -hmm. So, I think saying that, like, the Mizuki That's ending really is cool. the best ending is totally fine. Yeah. It's just weird kind of, like, having a big cathartic ending like that mm -hmm. halfway through the game, basically. It is. It's really weird. And like that, you're going to find that that happens with a lot of Uchikoshi games that utilize the, the flow chart though, is that mm -hmm. you're going to go a different well, route and you're going to like, you hit like an early point where it was just like, I did this like in the exact opposite. You order. did this in the exact <laughs> opposite like... order of me. And the thing that you got, like the big thing that got to stick in your craw, the entire game wasn't the big thing that got to stick in my craw. It was different because you saw something yeah. about a character <laughs> way before i saw it so i had already attached to that character it was like i love this character i will <laughs> i will i will i will go to bed with this character uh and then the big thing happens and you're like oh oh what yeah. happened why is that what <laughs> whereas you got that before me whereas the first route you did was like my second to last one yeah yeah so i'm like oh i'm finally getting to like the real meat of this game and it's like you did that one first that's so <laughs> weird to me like how the, my my order feels particularly weird mm. i won't say specifically why i th yeah. i think that yeah um, it was funny showing you screenshots of my flow chart and having you know exactly where i was going yeah and just being like <laughs> it was just like well oh boy. that's that's you gonna went, create a weird feeling yeah you went there first huh 
You did that route first, huh? You're real good at this detective thing. <laughs> you're good at this detective, <laughs> and you're you're a good father. Because that first junction uh, well, point, that first junction point, yeah, the, that I happens did. is determines whether you're a good dad or not. <laughs> yeah. Aww. I did the good dad route. Politics. You're a good dad. I did bad dad. Mizuki hates you. Mizuki route. hates me. <laughs> bad dudes, bad dads. Bud dads. It's all. It's all the same. Yeah. Poncho Smith says I got to no mercy route first. I think that's yeah. I think what that's I what I think that's what Rhett got first too. Yeah. yeah, that route's got a great name. I love it. It's so fitting. So the interesting thing about this game is it has the flow chart similar to you know his previous works nine 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 VLR zero time. Zero Time Dilemma's chart is kind of fucking crazy, it's, though. Yeah, that one's weird. But oh, anyways... Next level. What's interesting about this is that you're not really making conscious decisions to influence it. Because no. they they happen during the Somniums, which are like these ad- kind of adventure game portions where, like... Do you want to do... Do you want to lift the box or do you want to kick the box or something weird like that? Yeah. And, like, that will have massive ramifications on your overall playthrough. So, like, you don't really consciously choose which way it goes. You, you can kind of get an idea because they show you where the fork is at, like, on the yeah. left. They show you how you're progressing but, through the Somnium. You can, yeah. You could never predict, like, oh, if I do this, it'll go to this character's ending. And if I do no, this, it'll go to this character's ending. No, because it just goes on ending. weird fucking dream logic. Yeah. yeah, there's only one where you're making a conscious decision re- in the dream, really. yeah. yeah. Where if you if you trust a character or not, yeah, the others are just like total random. Totally re- like okay, I kicked the barrel instead of yeah. breathing on it. Weird. <laughs> that one. Yeah, the one where it's like, does this character go left or right in the warehouse? Is like, why does this matter so much? Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't like. In weird ways, those kinds of decisions do and yeah. don't matter with with how the narrative goes but it's Mm -hmm. it's also weird dream logic where it's just like we can make this weird because it's funny to make it weird we can make Iba wear a pot on her head we can have her put her face in a cake and have and do the rest of the and do the rest of the somnium with her face in the cake wait really yep (laughs) i I didn't see that i didn't yeah you can finish the somnium with the the pot on your head or you can put her face in a cake and she'll just walk around with it on the rest of the Somnium. Oh they game. put they put a lot of effort into their visual jokes. There's one real good gag where Mizuki does a thing, and it, <laughs> and it just and it just cuts to Date having this like absurdly exaggerated shocked face. Well, I'll, I'll put and it. I'll put it in chat it once we, ever. We've got an emote thanks to After Five. He does that. Oh, really? It's real good. Unfortunately, I can't. If you don't use oh. Frank or Phase Z, you can't oh, see it. It does show up on the. Yeah, it shows up on the the log though. That we. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Dante just has this amazing over the top reaction. That's really good. <laughs> that's probably a reference to something. Would be my guess, but I don't know. See, I think I would. Me being the huge weeb would recognize it if it was like a trace of something. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is, mm. but you never know. Never know. Uh, the character of Ota mm-hmm. <laughs> made me real fucking uncomfortable. You know, when I was streaming it, more than one person kind of either said so in chat that night, or they would DM me about it. it was like, boy, uh, that got that 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 route got me thinking a lot, and boy, I feel real yeah. bad because that route goes from for me, it basically went, man, Ota's a huge piece of shit. To I'm a huge man, piece of shit. <laughs> to man, I see so much of myself on o- in Oda. This oh. is really fucking uncomfortable. Oh, no, <laughs> you see, that, that route for hate. me, that route for me was hard for a yeah. different reason. So like when people were I like, totally "Oh, I'm having that. this. This route is hard." I was like, "Yeah, man, I totally get you." But then they were like, "Well, it's for this reason." I'm like, "Oh," because I wasn't thinking about it like that. I was yeah. thinking from the other thing that's in that route. Mm. Yeah, Oda is like my favorite and least favorite character ever. Simultaneously. <laughs> so that got me thinking. Yeah, I don't. It's a good game. It's just it almost feels too spread out. Hmm. Like some of the inve- investigation stuff maybe feels a little padding at times. Oh yeah. But but then when it goes hard, like the endings are all very good. Yeah. And then the true ending is 
Just not big enough for me, sorry. Credit sequence of the year. Hmm? Credit sequence oh, of the year. Of the very final thing? Yeah. The very final thing felt a little unearned. Are you fucking for real? It's it's a It's lot. great. It's great. No, no, I'm not saying it's not great. It just felt like it should have come after a much bigger ending. I don't know. I don't know. It, I think that I think so, that they wrap so it up great, very though. well. Yeah. Oh, like the, the very final thing definitely got me crying all over. Again. <laughs> that was your that was your choice. It was like cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and that, yeah. I I watched your the end of your LP, uh-huh. and I I think definitely the b- biggest two moments towards the end are Mizuki shows up and Mizuki shows up. <laughs> yes, I know what you're. Th- I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, they're both, both like, fine. "What are you kidding?" Both times it's like stand up and start clapping. Mine. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Mizuki's really good. Mizuki really almost steals that game. She's so good. Yeah. And props to her English voice actress as well, uh, Karina Bodiger. Uh, she did an amazing job on that character. Like, awesome. All of the scenes, like, like the 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 hard stuff and uh, the the fun stuff, where you're supposed to laugh and you know at the absurd things she's saying because she's a child and she's just being mean. Boy, <laughs> she can be real mean sometimes. Oh yeah, she says real mean things to you, but there's one line where she says something extremely sexual. By accident. <laughs> Blow those boys! <laughs> She's 12. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't scream that, my dear. They tried to earn that joke and it fell a little flat. <laughs> it's it's very funny. Though. It's funny, though. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I think my favorite character, not seriously, is the mermaid. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that... There's a mermaid, mermaid, mermaid cafe. cafe. There's a mermaid cafe, and there's an achievement for using your X-ray vision on one of the girls. Yeah, and he and you can keep doing it, and he'll keep having new dialogue. And he's just like, mm, "I love to look at those literal hip bones." <laughs> she's just, she's just got really nice hips. El Dante is a fucking weirdo. The, he, dude, the <laughs> dude, the dude smells shoe boxes. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I, I watched somebody doing an LP from, like, the very start of the game, and mm-hmm. she's just, like, not understanding. Immediately just, like, why is this dude such a creep? Because <laughs> she's, like, like, very early on, he's saying all this sexual stuff to Aiba. Yeah, and it's very tongue-in-cheek. Um, yeah, but you don't I, realize right away, like, this is just how he's going to be the whole game, <laughs> that he's a, <laughs> kind of a creeper. Yeah, he's he's a creeper, but he never goes too far. No. I don't think. Like, it's never like, oh, like, I can't. Like, he's not Teru Teru. Oh, God. Yeah, he definitely... Like, he Dante knows. will say something terrible and immediately be rebuked for it. Like, like Aiba is always on that shit. Or Mizuki yeah. is always on that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he knows there's boundaries, because he's yeah. very adamant about not going on a date with an 18-year-old. Yeah, yeah, he's... he's yeah. I did. I did not get the wow dude line because I think you th- said that you think some stuff is randomized. Oh, you didn't get wow dude. I didn't get wow that's... dude. I clicked on her constantly. Maybe the game was like, dude, See, you're, you're clicking on her too much. That's so. That's so weird. Like I said, yeah. I think some of that stuff is randomized. Yeah, I was definitely there with Mizuki and in- inspected her a whole bunch, and it didn't come up. And I was wow, like, wow dude, wow dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had another thought, but I think it just left me, so maybe that's it for now. <laughs> I watched I watched Polly stream like six hours of this, and it was just brought me a lot of joy. Cool. Oh, so Ukoshi has another work, an anime called Punchline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think has since been made into a visual novel, mm-hmm. but I'm a little wary of that, considering it was an it's anime an first. Like, yeah. But like, the funny thing about watching that anime originally between having played zero escape and all those games mm-hmm. was like, you could see some new ideas in it and you could see a lot of his old ideas kind of be being spun out into new ways. Mm-hmm. And then you play this game and you go, Oh, you took like all the new ideas that punchline had and reused them again in this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and probably made a much better thing because of yeah. it. Yeah. 
But and it, let's not forget that Uchikoshi also did 3D modeling for Pepsi Man. <laughs> True. So besides <laughs> that, besides that, I'm saying I think you can actually draw a much clearer line in themes between Zero Escape to Punchline to this now. Yeah, I like that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. They're very cl- like, like it's it's like Satoshi Kon in the same way in that they both have oh yeah they both have things Pet that themes they're very they like to explore a very certain specific, a specific mm-hmm. set of themes and they try to do that differently in each of their works. And I think that that's something that comes across in all of his, uh, in all of his games. I get that sense yes. with Urubuchi too. Yeah. Cool. 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 So, so Polly, yo, what have you been up to? I've been playing one whole video game for the last two one, weeks. Just one? Just one. One game. One, look, one, look, one video game. One game said, life, taking uh, all your time. That one game lifestyle it works out for yeah. you really well. Especially when it's really good. I spent the last two weeks and 87 hours <laughs> <laughs> finishing wow. up The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3. Um, I finished that just last night, or will it actually be this morning? Like, I'm, I'm going to yeah. say I probably finished this game like 16 hours ago or something. <laughs> so it's still very fresh in my mind. Um, so uh, I guess, like, uh, again, this is one of those games where it's just like it's real hard to talk about unless it's a spoiler oh, yeah. cast because <laughs> there's so much going on here narratively. So I'm going to try and get through this without saying much about what I think about the whole story of this game and how it all kind of fits together so, so the, story. to be clear it's the eighth time we're making doing this song and dance yes yes so story. more to count each individual person cool. it, it has a story it has a story there that's you all go. you can say there you go so like narratively though i think that this game aims to be bigger uh than the the like the smaller more personalized stories of the previous entries like I think that you see that a lot with Sky is that it's obviously kind of like the bigger stories there, but the but like the, the meat of the story that you're getting is these characters' interactions and their backstories and how they get swept up into this plot. Whereas Trails of Cold Steel is now very much like this is the Empire's story. This is the dark, sordid tale of... Erebonia as a whole and why it's really fucked up. Um, so, but, but there's still those smaller moments there where you've got characters that are struggling with things, especially within the new Class 7. I think that Yuna is a fantastic character, being a character from Crossbell and everything that happened to Crossbell in both the Crossbell games and in Cold Steel. Having her perspective and having her go through her arc of dealing with that is really good as well as uh, the voice acting for it is just um, like she really knocked it out of the park i really wish i had nice. looked her name up uh prior mm-hmm. to that but she just really nailed what needed to be nailed in those scenes so and, and every every character in cl- in the new class seven gets that moment like they all kind of go through their little arc but those aren't going to be kind of like the meat and potatoes it's aiming to be the much bigger picture of Erebonia and Zamiria as a whole it's kind of finally dissecting like the lore the actual things that make this world tick like things like you've heard the names of things like the septarions and we're going to start finding out what the fuck is a septarion and like how do they tie into everything in this fucking country's history and they're kind of finally starting to pull that back a little bit um so, so like we're starting to see kind of the, the history and the darker secrets of the empire laid bare, which like you, they started planting these seeds as early as the sky games. Uh, you started to see like some what you like just from the outside, you could tell that place is probably really messed up. Um, and then like the, for the closer we got to exploring that in, in, in later games and like, you know, especially the third, when you have like this very pivotal moment, with a certain character and another character from the Empire. It's a very intense meeting that they have. It kind of gives you the, the very idea of what's going on uh, throughout Cold Steel and, and, and the world of Erebonia. And so, you know, you've got all of that stuff being peeled back all at once. Like, this is a game that, despite the fact that it took me 87 hours to complete, it still felt like it moved really fast. Um, God damn. 
and I, I because it's just constantly giving you new stuff like every mm -hmm. like there's i don't feel that they waste that much time uh in this game like every scene like there, there's a meaningful character interaction there are uh meaningful ways of pushing the game's plot forward um, as well as giving you just the right amount of lore to keep you wanting to come back for that next play session or make you want to stay up another four hours <laughs> to finish the <laughs> chapter because it's probably really good. Um, it all culminates into a conclusion that is built up to in a way that Falcom is just really good at. Like, like I remember just having this moment yesterday where I was playing, and it was just like that moment in, in Star Fox 64 where it's quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was too quiet. <laughs> Fuck. It's all happening now. <laughs> <laughs> so this game earns its huge build up to its end in the same way that Cold Steel 1 and 2 have these tremendous build ups to the end where you're sitting there. You've got a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. You know some shit is about to happen, but the game is just like, no, no, seriously, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. There's nothing wrong. Everything's wrong now. <laughs> 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 and um, ultimately, this game's plot ends up writing a lot of checks that Cold Steel 4 mm. has to cash in a satisfying mm. way or this series is going to suffer for it. Mm -hmm. Like, it writes some very big checks in its last five hours that are just incredibly well put together, and they lead to just the right amount of intrigue. But if you don't handle this well, it, you're going to have a lot of salt. You're going to have a lot of anger. You're going to have some resentment. Um mm. And, and, and that's really all I can say about the story, uh, story wise is that mm -hmm. it's, it's got that shit that you want. Like all of this lore that's just kind of like been in the background this whole time of like, what are these people after? What is the ultimate goal here? Why do these people keep fucking with things that seem really unrelated? Oh no, it is all related. And now we know how, and it's a real good setup. You need to bring it home on that fourth one. And I trust Falcom, but I'm also just kind of like a little worried. Yeah, because there's an easy, there are some easy ways I could see this going real wrong. Mm -hmm. There are wrong ways to address some of the things that they have set up in this game to be real, real big and satisfying. And God, I hope they don't drop the ball. Yeah, I get why that's scary. Yeah, um, I think that like. Overall, like, it, good game. I, I have some issues. Um, mm. And I think my issue, my only, my low, my, my sole issue with this game is I think maybe the, the, the battle system has kind of run its course in a way that I think it's time to rebuild from the ground up and rethink mm -hmm. this. Because all of these battle systems are progressions of one another. It's iteration upon iteration, and we are on the eighth iteration as of oh, Cold Steel 3, of this battle system, which, while it's satisfying, I'm there are ways that bosses are now designed that feel like they're running up against a limitation and they don't know how else to provide a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, because this game has bosses enter enhanced mode a lot, which is a buff that grants them a 30 to 50% HP heal, uh, a strength buff, a defense buff, and a speed buff. And a lot of the time, if you don't knock them out of the buff, which they've got like a break gauge, uh, uh -huh. like like, simil like you can normally break enemies, and then there's like, if they go into this enhanced state, they completely refill their break gauge back up, and if you don't break them in time, they can fire off an S-Craft that will essentially one-hit KO the party. <laughs> so, like, sometimes the boss design can feel a lot like a Super Mario Sunshine level where the idea <laughs> is keep going up, keep going up. Oh, you fell. All oh, darn. You have to do it all over again. And mm. like, I got to a point leading up to the end of the game last night where it was four. I was fighting four bosses at once. And it's not just like, Oh, just a boss and some ads. No, it's four fucking super bosses that are named <laughs> storyline characters who are all very capable of unloading a world of hurt upon you. And 
trying to attack this situation AOE is a bad move because most of the time a boss is going to go to enhanced mode once you drop them by a certain number of HP or you've broken them once. Mm -hmm. So if you do this multiple times in a row to like many people at the same time, that's going to be bad for you because odds are, even with all the brave orders in the world, you're not going to survive four S-crafts to the face. <laughs> um, I just got a very unlucky roll on the RNG, um, and I lost a 25-minute boss fight, and I <laughs> had to do it all again. <laughs> and you threw the game in the trash. And I threw the game in the trash because I was angry. Mm -hmm. um, and I went back today and I revisited that fight. Uh, with, with a different setup. It's like, yeah, okay. I could have set up differently. Uh, but I still think that that enhanced mode is a solution to boss fights running up against a limitation. Because mm -hmm. they use it so much at the start and so much at the end. But, like, in the middle, there's not a lot of bosses that use it. Or if they do use it, it's not as potent <clears throat> mm -hmm. whereas like the game starts off with like the first major boss being able to do it like in the prologue and it hurts <laughs> um and yeah um the second issue i have with boss fights is how um narratively they can sort of be made to feel like you didn't accomplish anything Mm -hmm. So, like, tell me how, like, it would feel if you fought a run of, let's say, over the course of 30 hours, you fought 10 boss fights against all major NPCs, and every time you win, you you win the battle, the character drops to their knee, and it's like, oh, great, you won, and then uh, you flash back, and we're back to narrative world, where your characters are the ones that are kneeling on the ground, because <laughs> apparently you got your ass kicked, and the boss is still standing. And it's like, okay, like, uh, you, you, you may have scratched me, but I was only using a fourth of my power. <laughs> and imagine this happening over and over again, <clears throat> and every time you got this to happen, like, the boss is like, and, and, and you know, your characters are like, but, but we beat you. You, you got to tell us, blah, 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 blah. And the boss is like, ha ha, I don't have to tell you nothing. Teleport away. <laughs> if that keeps mm. happening, I think that feels real shitty narratively. And it, and it starts yeah. to feel like you're just not accomplishing anything. And it makes, like, it's making the actual act of playing the game feel pointless. Mm-hmm. And I think they, I think yeah. they just rely on that way too much in this game. Yeah, I definitely noticed that Xenoblade Two does it a few times, and it's it's very frustrating. This game does it. A yeah, it seems lot. significantly worse than this. Like it happens, like it, like you could just predict it. It's like you could yeah. be, you could fight any boss fight and say, okay, that's going to happen in this fight, and you will probably have a ninety percent chance. <laughs> yep, yep, that happened. Yeah, I was thinking about it how like second chapter kind of gets away with that by having the big bosses not directly fight you the first time yeah. they just like they summon some monster and you fight that yeah mm -hmm. so you don't actually lose the fight they're just like huh but you're still not good enough to fight me yet yeah and, then, and like they, they don't let away. they don't actually let you fucking defeat an enforcer yeah. until the final fucking chapter like they make yeah. that work and, like, why this game couldn't have just followed that a little more instead of just, like, ha-ha, I'm power level, power level. <laughs> like, this series is a lot more of that, by the way. Like, every character in this stupid series now has a name, like, I'm the Radiant Blade Lord, I'm the Heavy Blade, I'm the Fart Machine. Like, <laughs> everybody's got a title. And it's just, like... Oh boy, this is like starting to really turn into Dragon Ball Z or some shit because it's just power <laughs> level, power level, power level, and mm. it's something I really hope they scale back on in newer mm. games because I'm I don't really buy into it. It just feels kind of hokey to me. I mean, just I know what they're trying. Anime. I know what they're trying to do, and I know that they're ca catering to like obviously I think their own interests and 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 the audience. You know, like they're they're catering to that shonen crowd. I get it, but it just kind of like like the Sky Games didn't need that. 
Like, the characters that had titles in those games, they felt way more imposing rather than mm-hmm. every fucking character you run into in the, the Cold Steel games. It's like, I'm the Golden Rakshasa! I'm the Black Whirlwind! Like, what the fuck? Does, is there oh, any, God. is there any, I'm the normal guy? Is Where's the <laughs> Gilbert in this game? <laughs> is this just my hero academia now? It, well, I mean, it does take place in they the school. They got a school. <laughs> It's so anime. And it is taught, and those schools are run by people with titles. So, yeah. This is, yeah, this is basically My Hero Academia. Cool. I like I like this game a lot, despite the fact that I think that they are hitting a limitation with uh, their battle system and some of the narrative choices in the way that boss fights are tied into narrative that just. Like I said, like I don't like being made made feel like for for like thirty <laughs> hours that everything I'm doing is pointless. It just mm-hmm. doesn't work. Like narratively, you might need to be doing that, but I think that at some point you do kind of have to think of the player. Yeah, like you got to give me a bone. You got to make it feel like I earned something here. You can't just mm-hmm. send me home with like, well, we <laughs> we they got away again. What what? I hope it pays off by the end. I won't ask you if it does, because that would be a spoiler. I le- I think this game has a fantastic ending. It has a fantastic mm-hmm. ending sequence. Um, they line everything up the way that like like you're not gonna the predict it. Do. You're not gonna predict the things that happen. There are things that literally completely caught me off guard, and I'm just like, oh wh- what? And I was just completely stunned into silence a couple of times during that game's ending. Uh, so, I, I think Trails of Cold Steel 3 is a great game. It's flawed, but I don't think it's flawed to the point of, like, those flaws are going to hurt it dramatically. Um, um, you you seem going... real mad at some of those boss fights. Did you dude, ever drop it dude, to easy? Dude, no, no. I kept it on normal. I started the game like I started this game on hard, but then as soon as I started noticing that fucking buff was going to be in nearly every boss fight, I said, "Fuck this." Because all hard does is inflate stats. Yeah. And like yeah. the HP numbers are high enough as it is. I don't need these fuckers gaining more just because it's a percentage based thing. Yeah. Like I don't need to be having to deal another extra 12,000 on top of the 24 they just got back. But you had too much pride to drop it to very easy. I was not going to drop it to easy, no. <laughs> like, because I knew what was going wrong. It's just the RNG fucked me. The mm. RNG fucked me on two 25-minute boss fights. And <laughs> I was just very angry. Like, losing a boss fight because of some RNG bullshit. Like, oh, you literally just hit an AT delay to delay that character's turn. And now you're going to get an S-Craft and kill me fuck all the hell off. Sort sort of like when the boss hit its super move in when Rhett was playing and hit super move on a crit. And it fucking on a crit, crit yeah. on a crit turn. No, what Beautiful. happened is like a boss has the ability to AT delay you, which will mm-hmm. make you lose your next turn. This is an attack that had not hit it had not proc that on anybody the entire fight. It had been resisted every time. And then it dropped it once. It dropped it on one character who I was I, I was going to go... Like, when I got that character's turn, I was going to go into my Brave Orders and turn on the one that nullifies all fucking damage for, th- for three turns. Mm. It canceled that character's turn and then threw off the S-Craft. <laughs> that sounds like a very good Brave Order, though. It's a very, Well, all the Brave Orders are really good. Like, that's the thing, is that, like, all of the Brave this Orders... Game's easy. Yeah. Just go to use the Brave Orders. Just go to use the Brave Orders. That's what, that's what Game of Hikus told me. Yeah. I play it on Nightmare, and I haven't died once. <laughs> never mind that I'm just... Re- never mind that I'm just reading the Japanese uh, wiki that's been out for two and a half years. <laughs> I'm so good <laughs> at video games. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a good game. I like it. Okay, good. I like it. I, like it. I don't hate it. It just it made me it, mad. It, Look, games will make you it, mad. Okay, it has it, highs and lows. Look, games can make you mad. It happens sometimes. It happens to the best of us. Like when it tried to force me to play a card game, and I hate card <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it yeah. a dice mini game? Oh uh, no! It was. It, they 
so this game has a, a full ass card game in it that is akin to Magic the Gathering called Vantage Master. Um, and I was, I, they forced you to play it once and I was like, nope, I'm just quitting my turn. Nope, nope, not engaging with this. I hate it. I'm not going to do it. And then they make you do it as part of the story. <laughs> Thankfully, you can forfeit three times, and they will just let you continue as if you've won. That's the option that comes up. It's retry, continue as if you won. <laughs> That's Here's your baby choice. So, you win the boss fights, and the game says you lose, but then you can lose the card game, and the game, and the game says like, you yeah, win. They will win. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, I don't like card games. I don't like mini games. Hey, I, I did. I, hey, man, I did all the. Like mini games. I did all the fishing in this game. Okay, fuck off. Okay. I, I, I did. I did all the snowboarding in Cold Steel too. Oh my god! Oh, I thought you were gonna say Final Fantasy Seven. I did all the snowboarding in Final Fantasy Seven as well. <laughs> but I, did, I did all. Look, I have at least engaged with a lot of the mini games in this series. Okay. I don't want to fuck it. I hate card games. They're they're <laughs> awful. They're terrible. There's never, never been a good card game. Ever. Anybody that says they like a card game of any sort is fucking stupid. They're I literally we're stupid. I going to say in a video game so that I could make the joke. No, they're pretty much all TCGs are actually bad. No, all TCGs are terrible. Okay, I wait. Like I, take it back, I take it back. I take it back. The Cold Steel 1 and 2 game, Blade, is pretty good. Blade is easy though. It's just literally like, yo, was, I've got higher numbers. Like, yeah, I'll play Blade all day. But yeah, all the other, all the other all card the games are stupid. Nintendo. All the other card games are stupid, and stupid people play card games. TCGs are pretty busted. Like, I think you just have to accept that to get into them. Right, 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 right. Like Magic and Pokemon. I found out Magic and Pokemon just like delete the previous format. Like, at least Pokemon, you can only use. The, the cards released in the last, like, two years or something. Oh, God. We're, not, we're like, not getting into this. Okay. Like, we're not getting oh into that. God. No, I watch after five streams, and he talks about it enough. I know, oh, okay, all, gotcha. I know all I need to know about Pokemon trading card TCGs. bullshit. <laughs> and, and Yu-Gi-Oh. I know all about it, and I don't even want to, but that shit gets forced <laughs> into my head somehow. I like Relinquished. <laughs> Triple try was the best part of Final Fantasy VIII, but that was mostly by default. It's just like, what, like, look, dude, when you are competing against Final Fantasy VIII, a root <laughs> canal is more entertaining. <laughs> That's like if Sweet Coden had a card game and it was literally anything, it would be the best part. <laughs> it of would game. be the best. <laughs> <laughs> look, if you if you love card games, you know I'm just kidding you're not stupid you're like half kidding uh, half, i'm like half kidding. kidding maybe i really, 30%. Wish, I really wish, kidding. I wish we coded has been good so i could have gone more like suki coden no oh, i get you because suki is, is japanese for love yes as is i <clears throat> a lot of love in this in this podcast <laughs> especially this especially podcast. for card games and people that play them yep oh my god there's a wow dude emote yeah there is that's pretty good. Yep. Final Fantasy VIII or Golden Sun Dark Dawn, Dark Dawn Jet Storm asks. Oof. Oof. Man, they're both. Oof. God. Like, Dark, like Dark, 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 Dark Dawn. Been. Dark Dawn is just a, like, wow. It's hard to think of an RPG I've played that is more boring and dry. Like, wow. that yeah. is my sweet Odin. Final Fantasy VIII is not that. Yeah, <laughs> like... Eight, you can break very easily and just skip all the enemies yeah, and stay low level. Yeah, you get it over with real quick. You can't do that with uh, Golden Sun Dark Dawn. Mm -hmm. That game's like is, 50 Final hours. Final is really of... stupid and over the top, and that can be fun. In a way that I don't like, which is wild. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, Trails is good. Cool. It, it was a little weird, like having a new one come out because it was the realization like it was it was a little bit of tension like oh is this the one where they is this the one where they they shit the bed oh no because like i they because like every single other one that's come out is good yeah, yeah. and now it's like there's an actual unknown and it's there's a little bit scary there's legit expectations like yeah mm -hmm. but 
I think it's even bigger for the next one now. Yeah. Like, the way this one sounds like it yeah. ends and has to set up things. Like, like, oh boy, don't fuck up the next one. Yeah, four has to walk a really fine line. And, like, I've got, like, my own speculation of how they're going to go with that game. But I whew, they've got... So, I, I don't envy the job they've got to... The, the mess they've made... <laughs> and boy is it a mess they've just left a mess all over the place <laughs> the mess they've got to clean up oh, whoo, whoo. man it's going to be entertaining just to see them try at the very least for game number nine yeah. to be clear <laughs> nine games in we're finally at the point to where we can fuck up so bad <laughs> that's, that's the other that's the comforting thing is like Okay, they've done a good job so far. Yeah, like I, I have no reason to believe that they're they're mm-hmm. going to fuck it up. There may be things I disagree with. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm almost certain there will be at some point, but I don't think that they're going to do anything that's just out and out terrible. Yeah, that, that's the kind of way I can actually see it conflicting, or like someone not vibing with it on here is like if it's just sort of a worldview yeah. distinction, like if. If it just if it's the way they hit the note thematically, the idea, the perspective they're espousing just is a little bit out of sync. Yeah. Like I think they're probably going to deliver on it competently no matter what they do. It's just that's that's the kind of conflict I could foresee, probably. Yeah, yeah, I can I, I think that's uh definitely a, a fair way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. When you say like I can see bad ways this could go, that's yeah. kinda where my brain goes. It's like, yeah. well maybe they'll just have the uh, a perspective here that's like maybe a little basic in certain ways or whatnot Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and and like this is a series that is actually more prone to falling into anime tropes as well so Mm -hmm. like like and i think that the sky games and the crossbow games kind of avoided those pretty deftly but this this series it's not really afraid of them like it's kind of steeped itself into that (laughs) shonen formula a bit Mm, gotcha um yeah and, and uh, uh, in terms of the translation, uh, it's it's good. Uh, people were worried about it going to oh, Nisa, yeah. given the East Eight problem, and since most of the people that were at Xseed were the ones who had their hands on this, it's it's a pretty good translation and localization overall. My only gripe is that there's not a lot of voice acting; like they, they it's really mm. cut back. Um, Interesting, because like well, when uh, Xseed brought those games to PC, they added like something like. 10,000 more lines of voice dialogue. <sighs> so they like that like those games are almost entirely voiced. So I'm a little spoiled by that. So mm-hmm. like I would say maybe like 30 to 40% of this game is voiced. And that includes like major scenes or like there'll be like the weirdest ones are when like the main character Reen is having a conversation with other characters and they're all voiced but he's not Oh, weird. Oh, weird. <laughs> VLR so, style. So, that's real weird to me. It should just go into first person for that. Yeah, like, yeah. I would at least just voice Reen in those aspects, given that he is the protagonist. Yeah, like, those. Are, that's kind of, like, the only weirdness, but, like, I understand that, like, the normal games are that way, and that when those games got those extra lines of dialogue, XC was responsible for that, so... Um, you know, if they do, if they revisit these games in the future, maybe, you know, they'll patch that in, but I don't have high hopes. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I don't really see Nisa being the type to fund anything extra. They, they're a company that likes to do as little as possible (laughs) and just get something out. And I feel like they've already done as much as they're going to do with the cold steel games. Like, like the fact that you're getting it, it's competent. And it's, it's being done enough justice. It's probably the best you're going to get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least they didn't fuck it up. Like, that was the huge worry. Yeah, yeah. Easy, yeah. like, Ugh. big hole. Yeah. Archaeozoic big hole. <laughs> and just as we say that, the big hole Car- joke. Makes Carmichael, joke. right yeah. in chat, got our back. It's a very good, it's a very with, good joke. With the very big hole, very good big hole joke. <laughs> So how about a five-minute break? Cool. Yes. All right. We will be right back.
I'm watching a very good Pokemon They Killed Everybody video. <laughs> what? <laughs> the hell was that? What's that? I'm about Psycho Soldier today. It's made me very happy. All right. I just put that back on during the break. I was just like, oh my god. I forgot how this brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> it's like an 80s arcade game where they have vocals in the background in the background music. It's great. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Okay, <laughs> okay. That's forgive me. I'm 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 now I've I've started delving into the cold medicine because I'm getting a cold. Mm. Oh, so now I'm starting, well, we're basically done anyway. So I'm, I'm starting to feel like trash. So you That's take true. A poly, you take the Nyquil so that you feel a little better. The Nyquil helps. Take no. all the Nyquil. Down that. No, don't do <laughs> no, that. No, no. <laughs> that won't be good. Hey man, it's the holiday season. Nyquil comes in red and green. Those are Christmas yep. colors. Just drink <laughs> them both. <laughs> yep, just a nice cocktail. Here you go, <laughs> totally fine. I call it the Christmas, the the, the, the eternal for... Christmas nap is what I call it when I drink Ooh. both bottles. There's at least one podcast where I had like three Sudafed, and I was just completely. I think it was the first time I talked about Undertale. Oh, I was just completely wow. woozy. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know how to put words together. I'm oh wow, things are a little weird. <clears throat> It was a good time. I just linked a game called A Big Hole, which is good. I noticed. I see. It's, it's, uh, it's, which, it's, uh, that's a, a reference that's relevant to our topic at hand because we were talking about the Archaeozoic Big Hole. Like oh. five minutes ago. It's a boom. Like, it's timely. Like, he, he, no. he, he put that in as we were going on break, and that was, like, well within the two-minute time limit. Exactly. It was 2015. This predates Big Hole. And, and After Five likes games about holes. He played. Uh, he played Donut County. Mm-hmm. Oh, but he also played. There's poop in my soup. Man, let's get him on. Did not play. He can have him a segment. Goose game. Did not play Goose Game. Nope. Goose Game in the trash. Threw it in the trash, and we were like, "Look, boom! You're gonna play the whole game. You're gonna play mm-hmm. the whole whole game." <laughs> that's that's alliteration right there. Mm. And it's a pun. It's pun. Life is good. I'm next. You are. You are, John Thire. Dare. Oh. Throw it to somebody besides me. Uh, I, I would not dream of throwing it to anybody else. This except is going to be a very fun segment where John fucking pats himself on the back for mm-hmm. 20 minutes. We're used to uh, that. We're used to that. So in 2015, I played TIS 100. I bought and played it. Mm-hmm. This is the second big Zactronics programming game release it's only a two out of five difficult <laughs> difficult no this one this one's actually a four out of five Woo! Woo! <laughs> the highest ranking um so is space camp they're both he, he started off pretty rough and then like started pulling back as he went along mm. um so oh so this is this is zaktronics they released like a billion games apparently um they're I finally way too just, smart for most people they're, they're yeah. all like very they're puzzle games, but they're like programming themed puzzle games. So they basically just give you a thing you need to make and a bunch of tools and then say, go do this now. Yeah. <laughs> Within these strict rules. Um, so they're 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 very much the, the galaxy brain puzzle games for computer science nerds. And but they, they've gotten more accessible, I think, as they've gone along like um Opus Magnum was really yeah. big because that was the first one that lets you share gifts of your solutions on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So that made that I was very present yeah. on my timeline for a long time. The fact that that one I think has a two difficulty makes sense because I'm like, y- you see those gifts and you can see how it works and go, oh, I could do that. Yeah. Whereas I look at your TIS stuff and go, what? <laughs> what the fuck's <laughs> happening here? So I think basically... I, yeah, go ahead. Space, Space Cam also is completely alien to me Mm -hmm. i I remember a long time ago like when steam gave a shit about indies they had like an achievement to do something in space chem and you would get like a piece of coal or something Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so 
people just had to write guides because here's like literally the exact steps to do to beat like the first three puzzles Oof, and uh, get the achievement from Space Chem. Oh, it was weird. funny. Yeah, the uh, Space Chem like made a lot of sense. I played the first three worlds and I was, but I was already in the middle of TIS. Mm. Um, so I played TI, when I played TIS one hundred. There was just Space Chem and Infinifactory and TIS one hundred. Um, since then, there have been uh, Shenzhen five, and five Focus more Magnum. five I more games. Geez. They've had two more assembly games and two more circle games, including one just released like last month out of nowhere. Um, so Shenzhen IO, Exit Punks are the two newer assembly oh. games. And then Opus Magnum and the newest one, Malek Synthesis, um, which is the two new circle games. And then they also put out a VN this year. <laughs> what? Yeah. Eliza, you probably saw it. Oh, much. yeah. It's a Zactronics game. I, Difficulty zero. I did not know that. Yep. So they're cool. Like that's that's the vibe I get is that they are making the games that they really want to make. Yeah. Um, the the tagline for TIS one hundred is the assembly game that you didn't ask for. The <laughs> <laughs> um, assembly game you never asked for. I, I'm I'm here for that kind of cheekiness. Yep. Um, and it's just very very fun for me because when I started playing this game in 2015. I was still in college. I had a bunch of homework for my computer science classes I was doing. These days, <laughs> I am not doing a bunch of really complicated computer science homework. Um, I'm not stretching that part of my brain with constantly learning like new concepts and whatnot. Mm. And this is a lot more fun <laughs> today <laughs> than it was back then. Because I was literally taking a break from doing programming homework to play TIS 100. And Which is like, just programming Ugh. homework. Which is programming homework, the video game. Yeah. And these days, I am starving for programming homework. <laughs> so I, I am desperate for that. And this is filling that whole, that niche, very, that big hole very nicely. So you're saying if, if somebody's got a game idea, you're just going to program it for them. And they don't have to do anything. I hear you really like those kinds of arrangements. Mm, no, thank you. Um, I don't know. It sounded like something you'd really take somebody up on, John. <laughs> um well from, from from someone i trust right right I, um so tis so the thing with i'm i am past i made it past today the brick wall that i got stuck at at the time that i quit mm. i was at six, like six hours on my playtime when i stopped and now i'm at like 14 oh damn after like since Thursday or something. Nice. And I booted it back up on a whim because I saw the new one and I was like, I kind of want to try that again. Um, and it was the one where it was draw arbitrary rectangles on a grid. Um, be, start and you're just given a stream of x values, y values, w values, and width values and height values, and draw these rectangles. You just have these limited nodes where you can fill assembly commands and then you have a very limited memory set you have like one save register per node and then you can move values between the nodes and if you try to move a value from one node to the other and the other doesn't have an isn't on an instruction for receiving that it hangs and does and the program stops so you have to be careful and make sure that whenever you're trying to send a value from one node to the other the other is prepared to receive it and has a place to put it or else you might, things might get rough. It, it doesn't, it just waits until one pops up. Mm -hmm. But if you were at a point where you, but if you're just at a point where you never get to the right command, then things can go real sour. Um, it has a 16 page instruction manual, which you very much need to read. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a legit kind of interesting story, <laughs> which is told with like little text logs on deep on, um, mm. in the debug notes on locked nodes at each level. So there's a little text log for each level. Nice. <laughs> no music, almost no nothing else. All the storytelling is on those little paragraphs and then the and in the manual. Um, and then beyond that, you're just making programs. The conceit is that the all of the basic routines for the computer are wiped out, so you're filling them in in the debugger. So like you're telling the computer, this is how you sort a sequence of characters. This is how you... That's actually the final level, so... Oh, wow. Mm. Of course. Right quick sort in assembly. <laughs> the video game. Oh, my God. 
You see, um, I have played with Assembly a bit because I have played with fun. NES. I've played with NES development a little bit. Uh huh. Oh boy, it is wow. There's so much that needs to be it's considered. So it's insane. Hard. It's ridiculous. I took two classes where I had to do assembly programming, and they were some of the most fun classes I had in college because it is just there's no variables and there's no like control structures like do loops or while loops or for next no you just have to manage everything with i have these registers i can populate data into and i have and i can do go to statements yep and then i have a series of small commands it, assembly is like one step above binary like an assembly command is literally just these characters in binary and then the re- and the registers that it's acting on are have binary equivalents yep. like you can it's per line this translates into binary. It is as close to the metal as you can get. Yeah, it's, it's it's so fun. And when you consider that most games from the like Atari through, uh, I, I believe PlayStation One was also an assembly. <sighs> when you consider what they did, the kind of magic they worked with those games, and you realize that it's assembly you gain a big old appreciation yeah. and it's just like the big brains behind video games back in the day. Good God. Yup. It's, it's yeah. so impressive and you get a, this game will give you a little sip, snippet of that. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, it's just like, yeah, it's easy to look back at a lot of the NES library being bad nowadays mm-hmm. compared to like the standouts like Mario or Contra, but it's like, those games are still like incredibly hard to program. Like you look at Game Maker now, it's like it does like ninety percent of the work for you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Like like I said, like I played with NES development and just trying yeah. to get sprites on screen, accept movement from a controller, and to get it to to mm-hmm. cycle through sprites from memory. That was just enough to make me go. I'm never making an NES <laughs> game. I'll just fake it with Game Maker. Yeah. <laughs> It's so Boy, You made a Game Boy game? Pardon? You made a Game Boy game? Yes! I made a Game Boy game. With DB Studio. Yep. Uh, yeah. So the thought that PS1 games were also assembly, which I'm not entirely sure about, but if they were, holy fuck, how the fuck are you doing 3D in that? Yeah. Like, like, I, I I'm not for of, sure. I'm not ahead. 100% certain if it is, but I know yeah. that assembly was still in coding for a long time. Yeah. Not there like was a there's definitely a transition period where they were like using like C, which is still very low level for a yeah, lot of stuff. Yeah. But then still, when things were needed to be tricky, they would go down into assembly so they like, could get close to scale and get it optimized just the way they needed it to be. Like Sonic Spinball was originally written in C, but then they backported it to assembly, and that's why oh. it plays like ass. Oh. Like that game plays <laughs> at like 15 frames a second, but on the workstations it ran at 60. Because it was programmed in C, and then they had to backport it. So that's why that game performs like ass. Oh, I would think the backporting would be to make it run smoother. No, no it's because they, because they didn't originally do it in assembly, so it wasn't optimized uh, for assembly. Yeah. Uh, if, you, yeah. If, you automatically, if you automatically turn C into assembly, it is not as tidy as you can make it no. if you yeah. do it manually. That's why that game performs as terribly yeah. as it does. It feels like ass. So the, the so people, the people that made the game, they knew what they were doing. But when they handed it over to, um, like, like, because there were two companies involved with it, uh, I know that the Sega Institute was involved with it at some point, and I think that they're the ones that like that had to take the C and backport it. Uh, but the company that made the actual game in C, they knew what they were doing. Like, it, they, like they had good ideas for a good game there that functioned well. It's just not in the language that it was supposed to be made in, so they had to backport it. <laughs> oh, I wonder if that's out there anywhere. Mm, that would be interesting to find. Just make a PC version. Yeah. That runs better. God, it's so interesting. <sighs> yeah, RPG Maker. Tom does say, RPG Maker is very easy. It is, yeah. I mean, comparatively, like Unity and Unreal Engine, very easy. Yeah, like even though, even though those can be complicated and hard... Hell of a lot easier than assembly. Yeah. Yo, you like variables? You'll learn to love variables once you fucking play with assembly. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, as soon as you said no variables, even with my basic Flash programming stuff, I went, 
what the fuck are you talking about? You yeah, can't literally... have variables. And also, it's not just programming and assembly. It's every chip mm-hmm. has its own assembly oh. variant. Yep. Oh my so, God. like, I didn't learn assembly in college. I learned MIPS assembly, mm. which is just like this special chip that they basically use because it's easy to teach, not yeah. even because it's useful. Yeah. And then there's like, um, fuck, I can't even pull up the name of it. But like, there's a there's the one that's used on iPhones um, that's pretty popular that pe- a lot of people try to learn. It's like NES is like two eight oh six two eight oh six or something like that. Yeah. Oh my god, I think I saw this in a video Arm. last night. Yeah. Talking about three D World Runner. Yeah. It's not How, like, Swift. Square hired some specific guy that was like extremely Nasir. versed. Yeah, yeah. In this one chip on the NES from like I guess it was also used in one of the Ataris. Yeah. It's so, like these guys were literally coding four specific chips. He like, also wild. He also did uh the battle programming and shit for Secret of Mana and uh Evermore as well. Nice. God, that's excellent. Um God that Evermore battling feels a lot better than it totally does. Things. It totally <laughs> does. Um, so, yeah, this is... If you are interested, and if any of the stuff we're talking about is interesting, there are three assembly language-themed programming games by Zachtronics that are very, co- very seem very cool and fun, and TIS-100 is very cool. I'm up to 19 of the 25 puzzles solved now, so I'm a little bit... Still a little ways from the end. Um, so this morning I woke up at like 7.30 and I was like, I feel like playing TIS-100. And I loaded up and it was the puzzle I was stuck on, the rectangle one. And then I was like, okay. I was just like terrified for a second. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm just going to break this down into smaller problems and then fiddle my way through and then work my way through each problem. And I did that. And I had like four smaller problems. And each one of them took about a fucking hour. (laughs) And then I got to the end, and I was like, okay, I have absolutely everything, except I need to tell specifically the node I have controlling width that the rectangle is done drawing and to move on to the next rectangle. Everything else works. Everyone else knows to when to move on to the next thing. It's just this one width part that I need to fix. And that was about an hour and a half. Oh, that's <laughs> wild. That, like, like br- kudos to you. Uh, but I get pissed off at a 25-minute boss fight I have to redo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I spent, like, four hours on a one level in a puzzle game today. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm pretty sure um, it has 25 more levels after this. Oh, I my God. 25 more? I think so. Oh, I, so, because I, I talked I, to you about how Infinifactory I acts... Same thing. Yeah. Oh, I see. In. Infinite Factory has a point where it looks like you're done and then you unlock the second half of the game and I just went literally like, nope, I'm done. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna, they have two, they also have two achievements that are like 100%ed and then 100%ed V2. Oh, oh my God. no. So I think I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm very much interested in Shenzhen IO because it's, it's a little bit more gamey. They add more stuff. Yeah. You like are putting nodes of assembly into circuits and then drawing the circuits and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's got a little, it's more going on than just doing the assembly. Yeah. I, I, I love uh, Dances with the Wii's message here. Uh, 99 bugs in my production code. 99 bugs in my code. Oh my Take one down. <laughs> patch it around. 137 <laughs> bugs in my production code. <laughs> oh, that's, good. that's a good joke. Um, oh, that hit so, right. That hit right. Yeah, that's that's very <laughs> funny. Oh, when the joke hits real good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you had one. You had one pun yesterday. It hit me like, oh, it was the Claire, the Claire boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Zachtronics is really cool. They now have one Minecraft game, one book game. <laughs> three circle games and three assembly games. And obviously the assembly ones are the cool ones. And anyone that likes the circle games are what do dumb you idiots. They're Can dumb you describe idiot circle games? Base camp. Base camp, the, the ones where you move circles around. Opus Magnum. Okay. Uh, our friend Rob Grumbler made a circle game one time. It was on the, the iPhone way back in the day. It was called yeah. Circle Challenge. And it was the, the it was, it's based on a contest to draw a perfect circle. And, like, you used your finger to kind of draw the most perfect oh, circle you could and then <laughs> submit that. And that was really cool. That's cute. Um, there, there's no, like, drama in the Zachtronics community, it seems like. Everyone basically is just, like, chill and likes programming games. So oh, I, wow. I really like 
I'd really like Boy, that. If there's just... one community that probably shouldn't be toxic, yeah. It's this I, one. I, I really would like to kind of instigate some, like, <laughs> aggressiveness between, like, the assembly people <laughs> and the social people. It's like, oh, good, they released another... Oh, look, beat. the sissy idiot babies are here. Instead of making another cool game. Great, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever. It's oh, fine. Opus it's Magnum is so fucking casual. Aim for the lowest fucking common denominator. Honestly. I mean, uh, really, this should be a one out of five difficulty. <laughs> That's what I pointed out, is that they have out of five difficulty rankings for all the games on their sites, and none of them are five. None of them are five. Yet. <laughs> uh, that was a good laugh, I think. Um, but yeah, as long as there's at least as many assembly games as our circle games are good. And right now it's for three for three. Mm. So we're, I'm, I'm still at peace. You've, you've no reason to be up in arms yet. Mm-hmm. Red gifted me Shenzhen IO last year. So a I'm year ago. <laughs> oh, wow. I want to play it. There you go. But I want to, I want to beat the main 25 missions. Yeah. hundred first. I, yeah. I want to get that far in the game. The first half of the game. Uh, uh-huh. um, there's also a very cute, glorious trains wreck, um, chip chips, challenge riff. I played called rough and raffy, Mm-hmm. defeat plutonian vampires and i just want to link it because the comedy in it hit me real real right mm. um it's just like a good 15 to 20 minutes the 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 puzzling is very light mm-hmm. and very na- chill um it's both it's a vehicle for like the comedy of the chips challenge aesthetic which is ridiculous which is, it's great yeah, yeah exactly chips challenge is nuts so Tip Channel is very cute, and this yeah. is channeling a lot of that energy. Yeah, I this is definitely really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, this is a person. Um, they've been making Glorious Train Rex games for like eight years or something. They have a ton of work, so this is like a see a long a, a new entry in a long series of cool tiny games, and I kind of want to dig into that. That's cool. Um, and that's what I've been up to. Sweet Coden, and then being basic, it was literally like I played Sweet Coden because Devil May Cry was too hard, mm-hmm. um, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I need a brain dead easy baby game." And then I played a bunch of Sweet Coden, and I was like, "Oh my god, this my brain is oozing out my ears. This is so basic." <laughs> I never even talked about that. How like there's all the dungeons are straight lines. And oh yeah, the- they're all straight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very boring dungeon design. Oh, it's so easy. And then I was just like, "Okay, now let's play." I went from. The hardest action game to brain dead game to the the hardest puzzle game. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just I, my brain's a little fried, but it's treating me nice. That's uh, definitely some swor- some highs and lows there. Yeah. yeah. It's literally just like, okay, I'm not as feeling as sad now as I was a week ago, so I feel like I can play a game that's kind of taxing again. <laughs> um Rhett. What have you been so, up to? So Silly story that's kind of related, or very directly related to what you're talking about. A few years ago, there was this girl on Jeopardy, mm-hmm. and she was really good. Like, she made it to one of the Tournament of Champions, like, because she had won five games and then came back a few months later. Mm-hmm. On, like, her last appearance ever, when they do the little chat with the contestants, she basically all but says that she has a Twitch page and she streams video games. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So, I'm, so I'm immediately like, oh, I'm going to be able to find her because I know her name. Like, so I find her. And one day she goes on, and, you know, she's playing. TIS one she, She's playing Shenzhen IO. Oh wow! And I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, that's perfect for somebody that I know graduated and like works at MIT now. That's yeah, that's <laughs> like real she's good. playing the big brain games, of course. Of course. <laughs> she is what? not playing Minecraft. <laughs> no. <laughs> the way you described the puzzle that you just did in TIS. Mm-hmm. of having to like break it into like four smaller puzzles that really mm-hmm. does remind me of my experience with infinifactory mm-hmm. where like they're not games that have solutions that they're games that have they give you tools and engineering options to solve them because mm-hmm. that game is about building stuff physically like using conveyor belts and like yeah, it's a lot of like, okay, you have to make this really complicated shape, but if you br- break it into like four shape, four smaller things first, you can start to see how it all come together. But that game just got to be too much for me. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is just like get to the halfway point and then like, all right, now I'm going to sample a different one instead of like yeah. trying to suck the marrow out of just the one yeah. when they have this fortune, this like treasure trove of games to check mm-hmm. out. Yeah. 
I wonder how similar they are because Infinifactory also has like the hints of story between the puzzles when the oh, puzzles yeah. themselves are just them. And then mm. that game, it did a thing halfway and I was just like, fucking no way am I doing that? Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm also interested in how it compares with Baba is You. Since I know that's one you got deep into, that was yeah. also kind of programmy. Yeah. Programming. Yeah. Oh, that game is so much more just like understanding the rules and how to manipulate mm. them to what you want. It is, but like that's a totally different genre though. That is the game where those puzzles have like solutions. explicit solutions. Yeah. Oh, okay. And okay. like a, so, a few of them would have like alternate solutions, and sometimes they got patched out, <laughs> which kind of wasn't great. Oh wow. Remember I bitched about that where like that game got updated like six times in five days at, yeah. at one point where it's just like, dude, can you, f-? cause he completely broke one level. Like he tried to fix an alternate solution and then m- completely forgot about one thing where you could just basically go Baba is win and then just beat the level. So it's like, <laughs> you were maybe rushing these patches out a little too quickly cause you didn't see like this huge flaw and then like one level just got like removed entirely. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm on the page now, and it does say similar to games you played. TIS 100, Space Chem. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, they're both big brain games. Yeah, I would I would still not put Baba Yisoo in the same tier as them mm-hmm. anyway. But yeah, it's, it's like a 50-hour long puzzle game. <laughs> Life is good. What else have you been up to, Rhett? Uh, so, the one game at a time lifestyle... <laughs> It's good when you're playing something that you're into. Uh Like I, the Somnium Files, a game which I totally did like. Mm -hmm. And then I I even changed my sleep schedule a little bit recently to have more free time all in one block instead of splitting it before and after work. Mm -hmm. And then like a day after I did that, I finished I and was like, oh, hmm, got all this free time now. (laughs) What am I going to do? And I decided to kind of pushed myself through a game I didn't really like that much. Oh, Woo! no! And I didn't even realize this is kind of a transition. It's a puzzle game! Oh! Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, I played through the Talus Principle. Uh-oh. Yeah, you were, you've, you've been talking oh, to me man. about this one. I, yeah. I haven't heard anything about this one. So tell me if you've heard this one before. It's a first-person puzzle game. You've got uh, lasers and boxes, and you put the big square boxes on the switches. <laughs> oh, wait, you boy! Did talk to me about this and, one. And you, and you manipulate the levels around, or the lasers around, and have them turn on things. And there's fans. Oh, good. And you can put a box on a fan and have it lifted up. And I'm trying to think what else there is. Oh, okay, there's one thing that's not in Portal, which is you can click a button, and it'll like start recording. And then... You click the button again, and your your recording will play like what it did for those thirty seconds. And you can interact with it and like have it like carry you or a box across the room. So you can hit two switches at the same time. It's basically the exact same puzzles as uh, Ratchet and Ratchet Clank. Ratchet and, and Clank, yeah, Cracking Time. <laughs> so th- this is a game that is Portal, but it doesn't have the portals in it, or and... In- or interesting characters. <laughs> And it doesn't really have anything to replace the portals in the puzzles. Oh, no! I just... It's a lot of moving lasers around. (laughs) And uh, what was that other game? I think it was the Turing Test was also the portal without portals one. So I've played multiple... Like, there's a whole genre of games that is just... We're going to make portal, but we don't have an idea. (laughs) We're going to make portal without the fun. Without the fun part of portals that are an incredibly unique and fun gameplay gimmick. <laughs> God, there's a... Because there's a few of them that work. Like, there's the also the draw puzzles on walls genre, mm-hmm. which is Antichamber and The Witness. I think yeah, those yeah. work. Yeah. But then all like every other first person one that is like, we're portals, but without portals, like just always falls flat for me. Oh. Told me maybe it like killed the genre by <laughs> just doing it they, too good off the bat. They invented and killed the genre, honest to God. But then, yeah, you still. But people seem to really like this one, and I'm just not sure what yeah, I. Yeah, like I've heard people just sing this game's praises quite a bit, and then just kind of looking Very. at it being played and hearing you talk about it, it's just like, 
I this is dry and boring. I think the one hook people might latch onto here is are, is the story, which also kind of swung and missed for me, but maybe not quite as much. Uh, also, tell me if you've heard this one before. You wake up, and you're not sure where you are, and there's this voice in the sky talking to you. Oh, oh weird. God. Huh. I didn't know it actually did that. Huh. Yeah, so that's that's also kind of one of the main things. I think Turing Test does that as well. Oh, no. God. But So in this oh. one, the voice, he declares himself God, and if you solve all these puzzles... He will grant you eternal life. And I am Jonathan happiness. Blow, and if you solve my puzzles, <laughs> I will grant you eternal life. <laughs> Sorry, continue. So I like, will think you're at least half as smart as I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, it's very obvious that you're kind of in some weird testing facility because, like, you can see that you yourself are a robot. Mm-hmm. And... There are notes left by other robots in the same situation that are like, this is all bullshit, right? (laughs) (laughs) It is alarmingly on the nose. And like I showed Polly some screenshots where she's like, yeah, this is like making fun of itself. But then it still is. But it's still that thing. Yeah. Where it's like, this is all bullshit. I don't trust the voice in the sky. Like really on the nose stuff. Mm hmm. Probably the most interesting part to me are these kind of visual novel parts where there's this beeping computer terminal and this character you can talk to, like, asks you questions about the nature of humanity. And he's very good at, like, and you have, like, a lot of options you can pick, like, as dialogue responses. And he is, like, extremely adept at destroying all of your arguments. Oh, jeez. And that's kind of fun. So it's like... If all people are equal, who gets to go on the Ark? And you're like, uh, well, hmm. <laughs> the... I should probably have taken some screenshots so I could, like, read specifically what it says. But it's like, like, what defines a person? You go, like, oh, intelligence. And, and it's like, well, if you're a robot, are you a person? And you're like, well, hmm. hmm. I'm not a person, but I'm talking to you right now. Do you not think me a lesser life form? And I'm like, you know. He asks you stuff like, what is consciousness? Like, oh, it goes pretty geez. deep and stuff. It's like, yeah. And, and it just almost feels like that could have been spun out into its own more interesting smaller game instead yeah. of just being kind of a blip in the middle of this middling puzzle game. Yeah, there's this portal but boring yeah. genre. So the other thing about this game is that it pulls its punches on the difficulty mm. for way too long. Like, oh, I was God. fucking effortlessly breezing through this game for a while and then every once in a while I'd, I'd hit a bump mm-hmm. and then what I realized was so you basically have access to almost the entire game from the start what I realized was like you collect Tetris pieces for <laughs> completing the puzzles and then you yeah it's, it's real weird they're it's called sigils or something yeah. On the nose. yeah so the green ones represent an easy puzzle. The yellow ones represent a medium puzzle. And the red ones represent a hard puzzle. Mm-hmm. But, like, they're all green at the start. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even realize... I guess in the second area, it'll start mixing in a, a reds once in a while. So I finally realized, like, oh, okay, the red ones mean that's a hard puzzle. That's why every once in a while I'm tripping up. And then, like, 80% of the puzzles I'm still breezing through. So I finally realized there's a difficulty thing. And then I get to the third of three worlds... Literally every single one is red. Oh, good. (laughs) So it's like, oh, okay, the game starts here. But that also means, you know, I spent, like, significantly longer in the third world versus the other two where I just kind of breezed through in, like, an hour or two. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I still kind of forced myself to push through this game. Yeah, like, at no point did this sound like an experience you were enjoying. You were just kind of like, let's just get it done. I'm very bad at dropping things. Yeah, I've I think there's some. I think there's something to be said for just like, well, let's see this through. Well, I, see what this I has. Didn't, once the at least once the puzzles got harder, I wasn't bored. And yeah. I think that was the real killer. And then you know the talking to the character that shuts down your arguments every time was a nice little thread to right supplement that. So the other mm. thing is like this voice in the sky says, "Solve all these puzzles, and I'll let you into heaven, and you will have life eternal." <laughs> But don't climb that tower over there. <laughs> oh, jeez. 
<laughs> so of course I wanted to climb the fucking tower and figure out what's up there. Mm. And you literally have to solve every single puzzle in the game to to get either ending where you do the life eternal ending or climbing the tower. Mm-hmm. Both of them require you to do every single puzzle. So the fact that the whole thing is non-linear and you can go anywhere kind of yeah, it's kind doesn't of seem to amount to much because you can't end up skipping any puzzle by the no. end. Yeah, I remember the Swapper doing that and being like, okay, I guess we didn't really need the whole metroid thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There's a few parts in this where you can like ask for assistance, but there's only like three ways to get that in the entire game. <laughs> and then the clue it gives you is like super vague. Oh, oh so it doesn't yeah. even really help. It didn't. There's one I had to look, there's one puzzle I had to look up because the logic on it is just kind of busted where you you have to let go of an item in the air. Mhm. And then the item won't keep its momentum and just drop straight down. Aww. So it's like, I was literally never going to think of that. Mm-hmm. Because that's not how things that's dumb. Work. That's, yeah, not typically how yeah. you would think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was also just never going to attempt that. There were puzzles where it's like, I don't, I guess I did look up a couple because it was like, the, the graphics in the game are good to the point where sometimes you just miss vital information. Like, puzzle portal is super clean so if there's an item in the room you're gonna see it yeah Mm -hmm. whereas in this like oh i just literally didn't see that thing on the floor over there like this puzzle makes sense to me now because before it didn't because i didn't realize all the tools i had right so yeah it's a it's okay six out of ten i don't know (laughs) well you wouldn't say a five out of ten though no five out of ten is a real bad score I think, I think if bad. there's, I think if there's something meaningful you take away from the show, I mean the game, <laughs> like if there's, this should be at least a six out of ten. If there's a character you really still like, that's at least a six out of ten. That's at least. A six. I I agree, Red. I think that's at least a six out of ten. Uh, so speaking of not being able to drop things and finishing and sticking through to the end, I watched an anime called Demon Slayer. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! This uh, is... I won't spend too long on this. This is this is the this new is thing a... everybody spams and won't shut up about, but it's actually bad. Whoops! It's not actually bad. It's just this is a shonen ass shonen show. It is so fucking shonen, and it, I am just like listing off. Here's the idea from this show. Here's the idea from My Hero Academia. Here's idea from. Any other shonen show? See, I just call that bad. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't think that. Like, look, man, it's just cribbing notes from other shit. Yeah. It's not doing anything of its own. Oh, look, the character has a thing in her mouth. That's so unique and interesting. And uh... <laughs> well, see, she turns into a demon and she yeah. wants to eat people so badly, so they stick a thing of bamboo in her mouth and then they hypnotize her into not attacking people. It's a little weird. I mean, okay, see, that's interesting. But then yeah, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a shonen show. Yeah. So it's I will say it doesn't one... do anything good with this. Yeah. So, and then they keep her in a box because really? she can't because that's where women belong. Because <laughs> they can't, she can't be touched by sunlight. So he, the main character keeps her in a box on his sh- back because she could very conveniently has the ability to change size. So she just goes into this little kid form and gets in the box. <laughs> and then it carries her around the whole show. Uh, I actually, I'd say Nezuko is probably my favorite character because De- uh, Jetstorm in the chat says, what's the show called? It's called Demon Slayer. Shame it's a Cube. Table thing. It's called Shame Cube. <laughs> How's the animation? It's good, but obviously they're not going 10 out of 10 hype for the entire show. They go 10 out of 10 for one episode. This isn't Heaven's Feel. They're not going to blow all no. the budget on this. Yeah. I think my favorite moments all involve Nezuko, though. Like She probably is the best character because, one, she doesn't talk. <laughs> that's and a big plus. Because, yep. okay, I will say why that's good, because every other character in the show likes to fucking scream constantly. Well, and she's a woman. The- 
So, I mean, this show made, why do this you show, want her talking? <laughs> I, not, I realized it was bad when I said it, but I, <laughs> I was being facetious. I think John is rubbing off on you. I think that's this, what's happening. Polly, do you remember Bakugo? <laughs> yes. Literally he, made me stop watching that show. This show has multiple characters that scream as much as him. Well, so, so I understood. In this moment, I understood. Oh, this is why a character could be so annoying as to get you to drop a show that you're kind of on the face, uh, on the fence about already. Oh God, Bakker Girl is so bad. This this show introduces around halfway point, the halfway point, introduces two characters that scream as much as him. One of them is just, "Oh, I'm the best. I'm the strongest. I'm going to beat all the demons." And he just never shuts the fuck oh, up. Oh, God. And the other character is that same high-pitched screaming, except he's so afraid of everything. Oh, oh my God, I don't want it. The demons are coming to kill me. You know, oh, how, no. you know what? There's, there's only ever been one instance where literally everybody yelling is fucking funny <laughs> as hell, and it's the first episode of Seto Hanayome. Yeah, <laughs> that one's funny. And that uh, isn't that also the episode with the banana that gets turned into a gun? Because that's, that's one of the best of, yeah. fucking gags in an anime <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> that literally killed me the first time I saw it. I'm, I do remember that show being a bit exhausting with the yelling. Well, it was especially that first episode that is yeah. literally 22 minutes of people yelling <laughs> nonstop. But it is very funny. Everybody thinks these characters are funny, and I'm just not seeing it. Nobody, yeah, those two... nobody actually thinks these Demon Slayer characters are funny. Like, I think it's just like, oh, it's the new thing. Let's all pretend we like it. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, to backtrack a bit, Nezuko is good because she sits in the box the entire show. <laughs> but, but... When things Robots. are looking their worst, she will kick it out of the box and then start attacking the demons herself at, like, always the perfect moment. She So she she brings the hype, basically. Mm. That's very good. The, so the fact that she contributes to the fights is, like, actually such a huge plus in my book, mm -hmm. where she is not completely docile and passive in what is happening. I mean, other than the fact that we don't let her do anything other than... <laughs> she's a fucking Pokemon. Yeah, pretty That's much. why people like this show. It's just analogous to Pokemon. Only it's a girl. Oh my god. What were the what were the two shows where they you find they find the big the head lady just in a box? There was Girl Lagon and Outlaw Star, I wanna Outlaw say. Outlaw Star is definitely Outlaw one. Star, yeah. Okay. The girl in a box. Yeah. It's that well, Alice in Chain song. They seem to hint by the end of the show that Nezuko is going to become a demon slayer herself so that she might get a sword at some point. So that'd be cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Ah! Sorry. Is the show finished? The show is finished. The story <laughs> definitely is not. Oh, good. It's one of those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what Apparently that's going to be. The manga seems way further ahead than the show is getting right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> then we don't have to wait a billion years if they do, if they adapt it. Right. If, yeah, big if. So basically, around episode 15, after do dealing with one arc of those two characters that scream a lot, constantly, mm -hmm. they start ratcheting up for another arc, and I'm just like, man, I, mm, I might be done with this show. Wait, what, is this the oh, you did? You, you DM me that you were dropping it. It's the tournament arc. It's the tournament arc coming up. Actually, ironically, it's the one. It's the reason I might suggest John watch this show. It's the spider <laughs> arc. Oh, they deal with this whole family of spiders. So there's like five spider villains in a row. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. There's like the big buff daddy spider. <laughs> big buff daddy spider. It's John's spider. type right there. John wants to be taken by big buff daddy spider. He's very big and buff, <laughs> and, and very uh, daddy, and very yeah. daddy. Excellent. There's, like, the son who can, like, make razor-sharp spider webs and just fucking slice people into bits. He totally eviscerates one dude in, like, little meat cubes in a second. Uh, there's the mom who can marionette people with the spider webs and just have the demon slayers fight each other. Even if, they're, even if they're already dead, like, she'll just move the corpses around. Oh, that's very good. 
Uh, and then probably the favorite, there's another one who can... Sh- oh, there's one who can shoot cocoons and, like, liquefy people. And then the, the other one poisons you and you turn into a spider, except you keep your head. <laughs> so, so there's just all these human heads on spider bodies, and it's very fucking creepy. That's really... So, like, that's fun imagery there. Yeah. It's so much grosser than you're probably thinking it looks. So, like, they go real hard at the spider arc for a while. <laughs> It's like six episodes in a row of spider-themed villains mm-hmm. that all have different powers. So I actually can appreciate that, that they all have different variants of spider variants, abilities. Powers. Excellent. But I was at the very start of that arc, and I was like, I just... This character is still screaming, because not they left him... Because <laughs> the two main two main guys, they leave, him, they leave Crybaby behind... And he just literally screams for five minutes, like monologuing. Oh dear God! And I just couldn't fucking take it anymore. And then he's also screaming about how much he loves Nezuko, the girl. Uh. After, after meeting her for like ten seconds, and she's yeah. so pretty. Why is she in the box? Blah blah blah. <laughs> so I dropped the show. Yeah. <laughs> and then I picked it back and up. He, and then you polyed it. Why did you do I, this? Why did you do this? I had a very specific reason. So, I used to watch anime on my phone at work, and then eventually I was just like, man, the phone is too small. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah, that's not So reasonable. I started playing the Switch more. And then, basically, my mom got a new iPad, so I got her old tablet. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I bet anime would look really good on this thing. So I downloaded some shows from Netflix, and boy, Netflix has some real fucking stinkers oh, on there. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> so I watched three episodes of a show called Seven Seeds that is just fucking garbage. <laughs> and was like, well, Demon Slayer's not completely horrible. <laughs> right, like Demon that. Slayer wins just because it's not a Netflix original. Fucking yeah. good bar to have. Good bar. Polly says to me, this show's not going to get better just because you're watching it on a different screen, Rhett. <laughs> and then, Where's the lie? Where's the lie? And then in a way, it almost actually did. Oh, my. <laughs> so I watched a few episodes at work on this very shiny tablet in 1080p. And it's like, oh, this it looks really good. The other reason I want to give the show another chance is because... Of, the original video that I saw that had convinced me to watch this show was like, you know, praising it for the music and the animation. And then they also go, and then there's episode 19, the really good episode. <laughs> so I get to episode 19. It's like, okay, I'm not going to watch this one at work. I'm going to watch this one at home on like the TV and mm-hmm. really get into it. And then episode 19 by itself is actually super fucking good. <laughs> it is like, it is season finale good mm. and then it keeps going <laughs> six more episodes <laughs> it's a 26 episode show that peaks at 19 whoops <laughs> so like the main characters are pacing. it's wild so the, there's like a whole one more episode of the spider arc and then the characters are so fucking beat to shit after that that they're basically in the hospital for the rest of the show it seems like uh-huh. Like, I, thought, I thought you were about to say it's time for the beach episodes no they are in the hospital recovering like one of them who got poisoned has having to take anti anti spider poison medication and like they're joking that he partially turned into a spider so his limbs are really short right now but they're not showing it which cowards yeah cowards <laughs> The guy who screams constantly about being the best and the strongest got his ass beat so fucking badly that he's just kind of quiet now. Yay! <laughs> like, so basically, like, everybody almost dying. The yeah. heart and soul of any show is its characters. So the moment that the, all of those characters are incapacitated and unable to be their fucking gimmick is the moment this show becomes tolerable. But also boring, because now they're just in the hospital, like, in How pain. How is it not boring before? And you Can liked we... one episode. I mean, right, the was spider... It a, was it a really good episode? It's a very good episode. You should... Polly, 
Paul, I don't think you understand. This is a very good episode. <laughs> okay, I'm saying the spider arc built up nicely to this big climax. Mm-hmm. But then the fact that they are taking the due diligence to have the character sit in the hospital for seven episodes afterwards may be a bit fucking extreme. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that would be about as stupid and pointless as writing a sequel to your horror visual novel about characters Ouch. dealing with their real-life trauma and trying to get through that bullshit. That would be Shonen real sh- stupid. Shonen shows don't do that. Shonen shows don't do that. <laughs> the other thing that this this final arc is doing is introducing a shitload of new characters. Oh, no. They're, yeah, that's go. the other thing. Here we they're, go. <laughs> they're building up the whole Demon Slayer mythology, and here are the, like, ten greatest demon slayers and and like you haven't met all any of them up to this point it's just like we're we're building the fodder for like the next yeah 10 volumes of this series to slowly kill these all, all off basically Ugh. it's just weird pacing for them to be introducing all this all these characters right before the show ends like yeah, you gotta bait people in for season two make people ugh. think that these characters are gonna fucking matter when they're not like, even season one of My Hero Academia, like, ended at a pretty good point. It had a good cutoff point. Like, yeah. yeah. This one clearly doesn't, because, like, 19 or 20 should have been the end. Yeah. Mm. It's wild. But then also, like, if you're just doing this as a straight adaptation, boy, would you not want to start with the whole characters being wounded and needing to recover for five episodes arc. <laughs> Or maybe find a way about? to sen- maybe find a way to sensibly write that in the anime so yeah. that it's only one episode. Or that. The other no, thing gotta is gotta adapt the manga religiously now. That's yeah, it's the full metal alchemist problem all over again. Yep. Speaking of that, he meets the main villain in like episode six, like randomly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and apparently like all demons come from this one dude. Okay. So the whole logistic like, it, it is not a thing you should be annoyed about, but, like, the logistics of the show make absolutely no fucking sense to me. Like, how a single demon is, like, wiping out 30 demon slayers after seeing how rigorous the training is and, like, what a triumph it was for this one char- our main character to get through the training. And then, you know, seeing them be massacred by these spiders is like, wait, that doesn't make sense. And, like, you know, when they kill entire villages of people, like, I think, how is there this whole huge demon fighting organization with, like, these ten super-powered members that can just show up and win these fights instantly? Why are you not sending them, like, everywhere? Why are they all here right now? Like, what the fuck are they doing when they are not demon-slaying? Because it's clear that they should be demon-slaying. Yeah. You can't just take out this one dude who is apparently creating all other demons in the show. I don't know. It's it's silly. It's, it's just... very flimsy at best. Yeah. The, probably the most interesting thing to me in this show is finding out that it takes place around 1912 cuz the oh, main character Yeah. So the main character goes to, is like living in the mountains at the start and like you know having to hike over to his town ta- uh, hike over to the town like hours away down the mountain. And then he goes to Tokyo and there's light bulbs and shit and he's like, "What?" It's all advanced here. It's like, oh, oh, this is a lot more modern than I thought it was. Interesting. That's cool. But Japan's got to deal with this fucking demon problem, apparently, because they are massacring people. It's it's a show. Yeah. Six out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm going to give it on my anime list. <laughs> depending, depending on how the sequel anime goes. <laughs> <laughs> This is a joke that's going to keep on giving, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a very it really good is. one. I really like it. Do you know how much I have to hate a show to give out a five on that I site? know. It's, it's, <laughs> you, you've got some pretty low standards. I don't, I, don't, I don't hate shows that I give fives. I hate shows that I give fours. It's on the cusp of me hating <laughs> it. It's not, it's not there. My you friends know? that also hate Symphogear. <laughs> Let's see. I gave fours to... Wait, did I up flip floppers to a five? Ugh. Ugh. I guess I guess that's as good as flip floppers. <laughs> wow. Good job, Simpho Gear. I gave Sword Art Online a four and Fate Apocrypha a four. Woo. Woo. I don't have any ones, twos, or threes. I think I gave K on like a three. <laughs> 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 God. Ten numbers is too many. 
I, it is. It, it is. actually is. Yeah. Yeah. I think four. I, mean, I think game six. reviewers have it good. They've only got to worry about three numbers in the scale. <laughs> Nine, yep. eight, and ten. <laughs> Ooh, a seven. What the hell is a seven? What even is a seven? That is a, that is a fucking hockey stick. Get that out of here. <laughs> You don't score games based on sports equipment. <laughs> it's very funny, actually. Did you just come up with that? I just very pulled that off the top of my head. That's <laughs> very good. good. So, Polly, what else have you been up to? Nothing. Yeah. Not a damn thing. I played Trails of Cold Trails Steel 3 Steel. a lot. A lot. It was 87 hours, dude. What oh, else do I have time for? <laughs> it was literally get home play trails if i feel like it i only didn't there was only one day i didn't play and that was the day that um after five uh played mm-hmm. uh, um, um um donut county and poop in my soup <laughs> that was a good night that was a, that was a very fun uh evening mm-hmm. i i had a little moment like that where i finished street code in one and then was like i had played it like that for four days mm-hmm. and then i was just like thinking about starting street code in two and then just being like is this gonna, just going to be my next week and a half? Am I just going to burn a week and a half of my life on the altar of more sweet coke? Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's like, daunting yep. to think about. That's daunting to think about. And I just did it. <laughs> and now I'm now I'm taking breaks and doing other stuff. So that 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 isn't how it actually shook out. But mm. it was a it was a daunting way of starting that project. Yeah. Of starting that game. It's like, oh god, just just burning time. Mm. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't done anything else. I don't know what I'm like, man. Like thinking like Trails of Cold Steel Three was kind of like my last big thing I was really wanting yeah. to do. Like so, I was just like, I kind of feel like I got nothing. I can die now. Yeah, it's I can literally just die it's now. <laughs> it's fine. Can't die till Cold Steel Four. Yeah, it's a good yes. point. Yeah. My God, there's Sweet Code in Three, Four, and Five. I had no idea they yep. kept going. Yep. There's Sweet Code in Tactics, which everybody loves. So Code 4 is apparently the bad one, and I shudder to think what the <laughs> bad one is. It looks like in this series. It's the same as Wild Arms, isn't it? <laughs> oh, but yeah, like I think I might I might buy uh I might buy Goose Game soon. That, that cool. seems like a good uh, a good way to kinda mm-hmm. relax so. relax exactly. from an eighty seven hour mammoth of a game. It's not a meme anymore, so you can actually enjoy it. Yeah, I can actually enjoy the video game now. Not that I didn't enjoy it. Like I, you know what? I didn't get sick of goose images and memes. Those were fun. The people didn't kill them for some reason. Oh, we tried. They tried real damn hard. But yeah, like the good stuff, the good goose memes are that they, they, they stayed relevant. Mm-hmm. I like. The, the, I just thought of the one where she's what he's walking away with the Monica soul. Heart. Yeah, that was real good. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, I like, and I love the phrase. I think I will cause problems on purpose. Like, yeah. I think that's just a great <laughs> phrase. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Like, like I literally like, the, like those are the only game. Like, I have the Somnium Files and Trails of Cold Steel Three are the only real game. And Blazing Crumb were like the Trinity I was looking forward to this year, and now like the year's pretty much over for me. Really, uh, I remember hey, a time. Then- Hey, Polly, the new Clipping album was really good, huh? Oh, shit, yeah. There existed uh, an addiction to blood. I didn't know music could do that. That's real. Like, Clipping's there existed an existence to blood. It it existed an Mm. I'm sorry, I was having a a stroke. Don't mind me. Uh, There existed an addiction to blood. Is uh, It's the album that Insane Clown Posse always thinks they're making. In terms of being horrorcore, whereas Clipping's album is actually very dark and steeped in all of this horror atmosphere very well. And it's it's got, like, you know, David Diggs just kind of knocks it out of the park lyrically and tone-wise, as do all of the featured guests who play specific roles in certain songs uh, that are really, really, really good. But yeah, that, that album is super, super good. So much texture so much just amazing production like it just yeah and then there's like a an ending track that is literally 18 minutes of a piano burning <laughs> which i get what you're going for guys i get it but i am I'll never listened to it once i am never listening to that again yep. that will never be it on is a, a piano p- burning for 18 it, minutes it is literally a piano burning for 18 minutes <laughs> 
<laughs> you hear little snaps as the as the chords go. Yeah, you, like I'm pretty sure they actually burnt a piano and recorded it. Mm-hmm. The 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 history of that is that the piano should be yeah. on its last legs anyway. Is that yeah. it's a dying piano that you're putting down? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I know the, what they're going for. There's to it, like a flag burning. Yeah. Any any tracks on that album that like kind of stick out to you as, as as some of your favorites? Like I really like Club Down. Nothing is safe. Um. Um. Yeah, that, that that one sounds right. That the one where they're being chased by the serial killer girl is very good. Oh, she, uh, uh, story seven is really good with the uh, werewolf chick. Yeah, and, and biting out somebody's neck. That's real good. Yeah, um, all I'm in not, your I'm head. Not complicated. Yeah, yeah. Uh, La Mala Ordina is really good. I like that. It's just like a, it's a point of view of a rapper who raps about gangster shit, but he's really not about that life. And then the other yeah. two verses are by. Uh, and then the, there are two more verses by people that are gangsters that find this person and do very horrible things to him. And then the final mm-hmm. verse is the dude dying and like the production kind of cutting all the way out and just completely destroying itself into static for like a minute at the end. <laughs> I, yeah, that one definitely stuck with me because that's like that. That was like the end of a big industrial album. So yeah. like having that hit you in the middle there was like whoa yeah okay. it's it that's such yeah yeah that that one features el camino and benny the butcher appropriately <laughs> i love the open the real opener um nothing is safe yes that that's that's spooky yeah like, scary i think it gets a little scarier as it goes along the possession interlude was like whoa whoa okay. what is that what where did that come from it's not like a big song or anything but it's like oh jesus yeah it's just this chick talking really fast about being haunted and then it like fast forwards in the middle through what is assumedly probably the worst parts of it and then comes mm-hmm. back in um yeah like man that album's just real good if you like, I didn't know you could do that with music i didn't know you could t- make things like like I, I listen to all these big concept albums where they tell a story, and but it's like you're mostly there to listen to the songs, and then the, you kind of soak in the concept over time. Mm-hmm. This this is like very direct. Yeah, this is very steeped in its concepts and its vignettes, mm-hmm. um, but it's very like like it's not hiding behind metaphors. It's not giving no. you these like 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 somebody that's got their head up their ass because they think they're smart and they named their character something like the watcher or the miracle and it's like jesus christ his name's ted son of a bitch is that no it's just, this is just a guy that's dropping some really yes. hardcore horror bars mm-hmm. that and again david diggs has great delivery great voice for this just yeah like this is yeah. This will likely be on my end of the year list as one of the best albums of the year. <laughs> when they make a song called Run For Your Life, they communicate that concept very effectively. Yes! Yes! Yeah. And, uh, as opposed to, like, a, more, a vaguer thing. Like, I guess, um, like, Downward Spiral kind of hits that, where yeah. it's, like, going very direct and punching you in the throat with its concepts. But, yeah. like, this is, this is um, a little bit more isn't just like depression spiral it's that it's those horror yeah murdery like, this imagery. is just this is steeped in violence and and mm. like and it's not cartoony in the way that like an insane clown posse or a twisted would be uh, mm. this is just very like oh this is gory and squishy in a way that you typically don't hear from horror core because there's no comedy to it Mm-hmm. It's dead serious, and uh, the fact that they went that direction with it, and like they pulled it off as well as they did, I wasn't expecting that. Like I tried to just like wh- when I'm really expecting a new album from from, from an, an artist that I enjoy, I tend to avoid singles, I avoid things like that because I just I want to go in as blind as I can to a new album like that. So when I threw this on, it was just straight up horrorcore. It was just like what? <laughs> I've never heard horrorcore done this so direct and then just so mm-hmm. like the production backing it up so well damn so that, that kind of goes to my follow-up questions like hey where else can i get stuff like this oh uh, I, I mean i i think all of clipping's work is worth mm-hmm. checking out um but yeah like as far as good horror core uh, I, it's not a genre i'm typically that into so mm. I, I don't really know where have I would have go. recommendations. I'll just, I'll just listen to more clipping and then kind of see where that takes me. Yeah. Yeah. 
cool. This was a this was a good listen. Yeah, this, this is the highest. This is the most appreciated one on rate your music right now. Mm. Like that, people seem to really dig this one. Yeah, that's a cool. Yeah, so that's that's clippings. There existed an addiction to blood. Very, very. Yeah, I bet good. Rhett would like it. Oh, Rhett would love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna send him that, and I'm gonna send him the Cradle of Filth album I've been listening to. Yeah, oh, he'll boy. love both of them. <laughs> uh, that Spotify subscription I've had for a year has been treating me real well. Yeah, Spotify is a real good investment. And it's just like, mm-hmm. you know what? That's a real cheap investment to, to be able to kind of dig into stuff and like try and find things you typically wouldn't listen to. Oh, uh, another album I've been enjoying lately is the new Ginger album. Uh, they're a rock band. Uh, they're really good. Uh, it's called cool. Macro. Uh, only thing I don't like about it is I think it's the most uh, they they made the most annoying snare drum they could. Mm. I've never heard a snare drum be that dry and annoying in a mix before, but they did it. It's a good album. Yeah, the new Ginger album is real good. Um, looking at my list, what else we got here? What else did I, did, did I buy anything else? Nope, nope. The Ginger album was the last album I bought. Right, you liked an album? Yeah, I like the new Bent Knee album. You know what they mean. It's real good. I, I'm not versed to talk about music like you are, though. <laughs> I'm just kind of trying to feel it out. I don't think it actually has to be that complicated. Yeah, it's just like, yo, yeah. there's a, there, it's like sort of like post-grungy. Like, this is like an album that is adventurous sonically in the way that I wanted the new Slater Kenny album to be, but it wasn't, given the fact that like there was a lot of creative minds behind that Slater Kenny album. I think it comes off as limp when you compare it to the Bent Knee album, uh, because mm. this is sonically adventurous. Like there are no two songs that sound the same. It's like post grunge kind of uh, alt rock kind of thing going on. Uh, there's some electronica in there as well to kind of like give each song its own little bit of flavor. It's real good. That's nifty. Yeah. It's a real sonic adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we, we accidentally did a music podcast. We tricked everybody. We tricked everybody. We brought it in at the end and then did a music podcast. We tricked everybody to listen in to our music podcast. I have one other question. What's up? Did anyone ever play, have any of y'all played The Legend of Star, or The Adventure of Star Saver for the Game Boy? Nope. Okay. It was really bad. Oh. <laughs> in a kind of funny way. Oh, well, well talk about it. It's a, it's a, it's a little platformer. That I just one seat that I just one credited like after beating Devil after beating Devil May Cry. I was like, I don't have anything on my plate. And I was just like, it, it's all the bosses are like extremely rigid patterns mm-hmm. and have like way too much health, so they take like two or three minutes to kill. And then all the levels are like really loosey goosey, where the tiles almost look like glitchy with how they're kind of oh haphazardly ha- kind of thrown together placed. to the point where it's almost like a, a cool aesthetic that I was oh. really vibing with. <laughs> It's like almost, unless, it, it would almost be an interesting concept if you didn't know that it probably came from incompetence. Um, I think I would have been fine if the bosses had, I would have loved it if the bosses were not terrible. There we go. We just got to ROM hack it and, <laughs> and change the bosses. Just give them a little bit, a little less health and it'll be fine. Yeah, just half, third the health. There you go. Um, there's a Japan only sequel and it just looks way cleaner and more competent and i'm like well i don't care about that Ew! <laughs> who wants clean and competent games get out of here get the fuck out of here yep my games need to be first draft only get the fuck out Rhett, did you have anything else nope all right i think that's a podcast all right that is a podcast i want to thank everybody for coming out this fine sunday evening uh, i want to thank you of course also for the subscription and the bits all very much appreciated, and they will go to the Buy Poly Moon Pie funds. Don't you worry. <laughs> well, actually, so some of that's got to go to the Big Nep Figure Fund as well. So there's that. Um, John, where can the internet yeah. find you if they want to find you for whatever fucking reason? Faraway_times.itch.io. And Rhett, what about you? The internet you? can't find me. No, just, you, the, the internet doesn't deserve you, really. Is what it is. I, re- I renewed my website and I was just like, why? Almost did. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do next year. I'll get there and be like, yeah. No, no you mind. definitely. Yeah, oh, wait, I have to, you, don't I? 
<laughs> it's you funny because mine, it. mine, mine actually runs out April, April twentieth. Oh no, <laughs> April twentieth of two thousand twenty. <laughs> it's perfect. It's also in my. That's also when my debit card expires. Four twenty. Oh so I've been able to put. I've been able to write four twenty as my expiration date for the last four years. It's been funny <laughs> every time I do it. Nice. It's nice. And I'm Polly. You can find me on my dumb website. And remember, we are the podcast. I love you. We are the only ones that love you. <laughs> All right, that's podcast people. Uh, let me find somebody. To, let me find somebody to throw you on over to a host. Looks like looks like a. Fodic Cthulhu. He looks like he's getting ready to do a bunch of video games. He just That's what he's going to do. He's going to play video games. That's what you do on Twitch, right? You play video games. So we'll yeah. go ahead and we will throw him a host and I will catch you folks next time. Uh, we love you. And remember, we got like Sean Chiplock interview that'll be going up next week as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, you got questions you want to do. Remember, Polly at Socks Make People Sexy dot net. Send me a question and I'll ask the voice actor. Uh, And we'll catch you next time. Good night.